Kelly, you need to unmute yourself. For some, it's just the sound of ice hitting heavy duty plastic. But for us, it's the signal calling us back to the light. And to Greg's house, because he just got a new grill. Connecting to Hot Jam's playlist. Welcome back, Bud Light legends. It's time to take summer by the coolers. Have you been hurt? <laughs> Tired of feeling sore? Aww. Let Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine help you. Since 1973, the doctors and physical therapists at Cape Fear Ortho have remained the experts in providing exceptional, experienced orthopedic care. From surgery to physical therapy, we can help get your body back on the right track to make you feel great again. Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, the official orthopedic provider of the Fayetteville Marksman. The goal of the Fayetteville Area Metropolitan Planning Organization is to develop plans that will provide the safest and most efficient transportation while protecting and enhancing the environment. On your way to your next Marksman game, remember, you can walk, carpool, or use the FAST app to track transit system buses. Marky travels green, and you should too, with FAMPO. Hey, hey you, are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. Web Carpet Company has been the finest in Fayetteville flooring since 1965. Our friendly and courteous staff will help you find the flooring of your dreams, including the best in pet-friendly carpet. Once you've selected your dream floor, our professional sales and installation teams will ensure your floor buying experience is exceptional. Visit us today on Rayford Road and at webcarpet.net. Go Irishman! Look at our yard. So many anthills everywhere. Did you know that a single ant can live to be 29 years old? Really? Well, what about a married one? Seriously? <laughs> but really, uh, we need to fix the yard. St. Peter Pest Control handles all your mosquitoes, ants, spiders, cockroaches, and even rodents. St. Peter Pest Control provides full home pest protection and consistent treatment of ants and mosquitoes in your yard, too. At St. Peter Pest Control, we send all your bugs to see St. Peter. Providing patients with a relaxing environment and high-quality dental care, Carolina's Dentist offers positively different dentistry in Fayetteville, Rayford, and Spring Lake. We're in network with most insurance providers, and we offer flexible finite options to keep the dental care within reach. From cavity prevention to dramatic smile makeovers, we offer a variety of dental services for every step of your dental health journey. Consider us your home for all of your dental care needs. Experience the thrill of being a Fayetteville Marksman season ticket holder and all the benefits that come along with it, including your same great seat for 28 or 14 home games, exclusive season ticket member events, and an opportunity to enjoy discounts on food and beverage and merchandise at the Crown Coliseum. Skate to MarksmanHockey.com backslash season tickets to learn more. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome inside the Pelham Civic Complex in beautiful Pelham, Alabama, where tonight the Fayetteville Marksmen look to extend their win streak to three as they take on the Birmingham Bulls. Hi, everybody. I'm Drew Blevins. I'll be alongside with you for this one. The month of December has been kind to the Fayetteville Marksmen as of recently, but as with the entirety of this season up to this point, a lot of this now comes down to what you can do in the games ahead and not focusing on the games that are behind you. The Marksmen have taken five of the last six possible standings points. They've won each of their last two, and while there was a bit of a struggle in the third period against Macon on Friday, Overall, the marksmen have shown market improvement across their game. That's great for Corey Melkert and company, but now you're going to get a real litmus test to see where you stand against one of the premier teams in the league. The Birmingham Bulls would win the Most Improved Team Award if there was such an award given by the SPHL. A team last year that just struggled to get anywhere remotely close to double-digit wins now finds themselves already possessing 10. They are the most explosive offense in the league. They are tied with Peoria for the most goals scored. They outshoot nearly every opponent that they play, especially here at home where they have six of their ten wins. And tonight, the Fayetteville Marksmen will go right into the ring to tangle with the Bulls. This is going to be a lot of fun, though, because for Corey Melkert, his defensive style of play now has to match up against one of the best offenses ever assembled in the SPHL. That means he's going to know exactly where his group of blue liners stand, but also how his team is able to play team defense. Are they able to break out the puck consistently and with good puck possession? Do they have a neutral zone presence? Are they able to generate off the rush, or do they have to get into a setup situation? Fact of the matter is, Birmingham is going to be a team that's going to want to go up and down all night. Oh, they'll give up 35 or 40 shots, but it doesn't matter because they're going to take 50 or 60 and they're going to place their bets on themselves that when they're putting that volume of shots onto your goaltender, they're going to be able to put the puck in the net. It's always fun when these two teams get together. It's typically a really close game. There's always a little bit of added extra spice with some vitriol dating back to when the Bulls bounced the marksman from the playoffs a handful of years ago now. But nonetheless, manifestly, these are four large looming points for the Fayetteville Marksmen and points they're going to feel like they simply have to have if they want to get up and into the league's upper echelon of top teams. We caught up with the head coach of the Fayetteville Marksmen prior to tonight's contest. You'll hear his comments right after these messages. This is Marksman Hockey. Kelly, Kelly, you need to yourself. For some, it's just the sound of ice hitting heavy duty plastic. But for us, it's the signal calling us back to the light and to Greg's house because he just got a new grill. Connecting to Hot Jam's playlist. Welcome back, Bud Light legends. It's time to take summer by the coolers. Have you been hurt? <laughs> Tired of feeling sore? Aww. Let Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine help you. Since 1973, the doctors and physical therapists at Cape Fear Ortho have remained the experts in providing exceptional, experienced orthopedic care. From surgery to physical therapy, we can help get your body back on the right track to make you feel great again. Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, the official orthopedic provider of the Fayetteville Marksman. The goal of the Fayetteville Area Metropolitan Planning Organization is to develop plans that will provide the safest and most efficient transportation while protecting and enhancing the environment. On your way to your next Marksman game, remember, you can walk, carpool, or use the FAST app to track transit system buses. Marky travels green, and you should too, with FAMPO. We welcome you back to Marksman pregame. Drew Blevins alongside the head coach of the Fayetteville Marksman, Corey Melkert. Coach, you're taking on a Birmingham team tonight that is known for their offense. They're tied for the most goals in the league. You're a guy who played defense. You make sure to predicate a lot of your game plan on the way your defense plays. What was your message to them in the morning skate today about knowing what's coming against them? Yeah, I mean, for us, obviously, we have to defend and, and play the game the right way. And, you know, we have to be above the puck and, you know, willingness to track and, you know, close time and space in the D zone is obviously going to be huge. You know, obviously they're, they're a really good hockey team, so it'll be a good test for us. 
On the other side of the puck, Brian Bowen has found a lot of his offensive game. He scored two goals in each of the last two games, added an assist, now tied for the team lead in goals. You said you were waiting for a breakout performance from an individual. You didn't know who it was going to be. Is that what you were looking for out of him specifically? Yeah, I mean, you know, we kind of talked about Brian last week, and, you know, he's a he's a goal scorer. So, you know, once they start going in, they seem to come in bunches for him. So, you know, obviously for him, hopefully – you know, hopefully that continues to happen, but I wasn't, you know, I wasn't worried about his game because he was getting his opportunities. They just weren't following, but, you know, obviously the last couple of games, he's been fortunate enough to get a couple each game. Someone we didn't get to talk about was one of the newest marksmen, Jack Patterson, coming out of Ontario Tech. I enjoyed watching him play. I think he brings a lot of a different dynamic to this team. Certainly seemed like the pace was not a problem for him. What did you think of the way he played against the Macon Mayhem, and is that what we can expect to see more of from number 13? Yeah, I mean, Jack's, Jack's a really good hockey player, and you know, he's, um, you know, he's an individual that can move up and down your lineup. I think he plays, you know, he plays a really heavy game. Um, you know, he's heavy down low. He's strong on pucks. He's willing to hang on to the pucks, and his hockey IQ is obviously really good I think you know he insulates a, insulates a line defensively um, but I think he's also has an op- offensive upside as well so um, you know I'm happy to have him you would remark that this has historically been one of those house of horror buildings for the marksman somewhere where you've struggled to play and, and haven't always put it together despite the fact you were able to get four wins out of five chances here in this building last year how do you put that in the back of your mind not think about it and just focus on the 60 minute of, of hockey that's at hand yeah, I mean, we just have to go out there and be ready from the puck drop. I think, you know, we've struggled at times being ready for games on the road. You know, and our our record actually kind of indicates that, you know, you look at our home record, it's really good. I mean, it's, you know, whatever we are, 6-2-2 two and two at home, and then we go on the road and we're a couple games below 500. So, you know, for us, it's just being ready to play on the road right off the start. Last one for you. Right now, you sit in ninth place, but you're only four points out of being in what would be a three-way tie for fourth. You're someone who's never really been worried about the results. You're a much more processual coach. You want to go through the process of developing, and the results will come. But knowing there's that much parity and knowing how tight that is, how much more important does every game become knowing that truly anybody can win on any given night? Yeah, I mean, obviously it's important to keep pace, but I mean, what's you know, what's the point if you're not playing the right way? You know, if you're not playing the right way and you're not going through the process and, you know, learning how to grow as a team and, you know, buying into what we need to do to be successful, we're not going to have success anyway. So, you know, I try not to worry too much about that stuff um, because I know if we go out there and we do the stuff and we follow the game plan and, you know, everyone comes together and we come together as a team, that's when we're going to have success and then that's when those points and the gaps will start to close. Corey, thanks so much for your time. Thank you. He's the head coach of the Fayetteville Marksman, Corey Melker. We'll be right back with more Marksman pregame right after this. Hey, hey you, are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. Web Carpet Company has been the finest in Fayetteville flooring since 1965. Our friendly and courteous staff will help you find the flooring of your dreams, including the best in pet-friendly carpet. Once you've selected your dream floor, our professional sales and installation teams will ensure your floor buying experience is exceptional. Visit us today on Rayford Road and at webcarpet.net. Look at our yard. So many anthills everywhere. Did you know that a single ant can live to be 29 years old? Really? Well, what about a married one? Seriously? (laughs) But really, uh, we need to fix the yard. St. Peter Pest Control handles all your mosquitoes, ants, spiders, cockroaches, and even rodents. St. Peter Pest Control provides full home pest protection and consistent treatment of ants and mosquitoes in your yard, too. At St. Peter Pest Control, we send all your bugs to see St. Peter. Providing patients with a relaxing environment and high quality dental care, Carolina's Dentist offers positively different dentistry in Fayetteville, Rayford, and Spring Lake. We're a network with most insurance providers. 
and we offer flexible finite options to keep your dental care within reach. From cavity prevention to dramatic smile makeovers, we offer a variety of dental services for every step of your dental health journey. Consider us your home for all of your dental care needs. Experience the thrill of being a Fayetteville Marksman season ticket holder and all the benefits that come along with it, including your same great seat for 28 or 14 home games, exclusive season ticket member events, and an opportunity to enjoy discounts on food and beverage and merchandise at the Crown Coliseum. Skate to MarksmanHockey.com backslash season tickets to learn more. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce. Because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here. Welcome you back to Pelham, Alabama. Drew Blevins alongside you in the broadcast booth as the Fayetteville Marksmen prepare to take on the Birmingham Bulls, meeting number two of only three between these teams this season. The Marksmen will not come back to Pelham this year, and the Bulls will not make the trip to the Crown Coliseum this season. Just one of those weird things in the course of scheduling this season. The Marksmen are going to come back to the state of Alabama, but it will be in January as they will do a split between Knoxville and then head to Huntsville where they'll take on the Havoc. The Havoc also come to Fayetteville for the first time since the 1920 season this year. Let's go ahead and have a look at how these two teams are going to line up. For the Fayetteville Marksmen, it's a lot of the same. Brian Moore remains out of the lineup on the 21-day IR. His IR stint could end as soon as Christmas Day. He is expected to be back in the lineup for the 27th, but with him on the IR, that has allowed the Marksmen to grow their roster and certainly make a couple of moves that we'll get to here momentarily. Out of the lineup tonight is Dominic Sacco. He did not make the trip to Alabama with the team, so Sacco will not play throughout the course of this weekend. An undisclosed concern for Dominic Sacco, and that's a blow because he had been one of those critical components to the top power play unit for the Fayetteville Marks. Healthy extra tonight is number 16, Kyle Moore. There's a lot of expectation that Moore could go back into the lineup as soon as tomorrow, but there is starting to be a little bit of congestion there for that 10th forward spot on who's going to be Corey Melkert's extra forward night in and night out. The one move the Fayetteville Marksman did make this week came yesterday officially as they traded future considerations to the Quad City Storm in exchange for defenseman Tristan Terrio. Terrio has played nine games with the Storm already this season, and it was a big surprise to a lot of Storm fans that he will be exiting their lineup and making his way to Fayetteville, North Carolina. He's a hard-nosed defenseman, not afraid to lay the body, and ultimately just what the marksmen are looking for night in, night out, a little bit more grit and toughness on that blue line. That does mean that with seven defensemen, you're looking at somebody to be moved in some fashion, whether it's a trade, whether it's a wave, we don't know yet, and there's also really no meaningful speculation as to who that's going to be if Melker does opt to go with only six defensemen. So it will be one of those proving ground games tonight for the Fayetteville Marksman, as the last few have been as Melkert begins to cobble together this lineup much, much different than what opening day was. For the Birmingham Bulls, they're going to be missing a lot of their offensive firepower. Mike Davis is serving his one-game suspension that stemmed from last weekend's altercation. Carson Rose is also out of the lineup tonight. He may be out the entire weekend with an upper body concern. Just looking at what that means, Carson Rose has 26 points this year, evenly distributed, 13 goals, 13 assists. Mike Davis has seven goals and eight assists, and that's just gone from the lineup. That is going to allow a little bit of extra space for the league's leading scorer, Michael Gillespie, to work. But nonetheless, those two will be missed. Your starting goaltenders tonight, Brent Moran will make his fourth straight start with a 4-2-2 two two record. Moran has been in net for each game that the Marksmen have secured points during this streak. 
and in net for the Birmingham Bulls, it will be Austin Lotz. Folks, we'll step aside for these messages from our corporate partners. Coming back, we'll give you our keys to victory. This is Marksman Hockey. For some, it's just the sound of ice hitting heavy duty plastic. But for us, it's the signal calling us back to the light. And to Greg's house, because he just got a new grill. Connecting to Hot Jam's playlist. Welcome back, Bud Light legends. It's time to take summer by the coolers. Have you been hurt? <laughs> Tired of feeling sore? Aww. Let Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine help you. Since 1973, the doctors and physical therapists at Cape Fear Ortho have remained the experts in providing exceptional, experienced orthopedic care. From surgery to physical therapy, we can help get your body back on the right track to make you feel great again. Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, the official orthopedic provider of the Fayetteville Marksman. The goal of the Fayetteville Area Metropolitan Planning Organization is to develop plans that will provide the safest and most efficient transportation while protecting and enhancing the environment. On your way to your next Marksman game, remember, you can walk, carpool, or use the FAST app to track transit system buses. Marky travels green, and you should too, with FAMPO. Hey, hey you, are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. Web Carpet Company has been the finest in Fayetteville flooring since 1965. Our friendly and courteous staff will help you find the flooring of your dreams, including the best in pet-friendly carpet. Once you've selected your dream floor, our professional sales and installation teams will ensure your floor buying experience is exceptional. Visit us today on Rayford Road and at webcarpet.net. Go Irishman! Look at our yard. So many anthills everywhere. Did you know that a single ant can live to be 29 years old? Really? Well, what about a married one? Seriously? <laughs> but really, uh, we need to fix the yard. St. Peter Pest Control handles all your mosquitoes, ants, spiders, cockroaches, and even rodents. St. Peter Pest Control provides full home pest protection and consistent treatment of ants and mosquitoes in your yard, too. At St. Peter Pest Control, we send all your bugs to see St. Peter. Welcome back to Birmingham, Alabama. Drew Blevins alongside you in the broadcast booth as the home team takes to the ice before their starting lineups are announced. It's always fun to be here at the Pelham Civic Complex. Let's go ahead and turn your attention to tonight's keys to victory. We'll start things off with the visiting Fayetteville Marksman. The number one thing I think tonight for the Marksman is this is a management game. You understand that Carson Rose isn't in the lineup. You understand Mike Davis isn't there, so you're missing a little bit of the tenacity. You're missing, you're, you're missing some of that offensive contribution. The six blue liners for the Marksman have to manage the game. They've got to keep attackers to the outside. They've got to stay in solid body positioning. If they're able to do that, the shots are going to be there, but Brent Moran and Jason Pulaski are good enough goaltenders that if they're going to see the puck, they're going to stop it, especially if it's a puck coming from distance. And that's why it's so critical to manage this game if you're the Fayetteville Marksman. The other thing is you've got to be locked in and ready to go. I think the start is incredibly important for the Fayetteville Marksman. And as Corey Melkert said during his pregame comments, this has not always been the team that has been well prepared for road contests, especially against good offensive teams. We saw him fall against Pensacola. We've seen him fall against Birmingham before. You've got to be ready and out there, ready to go for the start of this contest. For the Birmingham Bulls, I think taking the body is one key that you're going to want to see tonight. They want to be the more physical team, and they also want to be the team that scores first. 
That'll do it for us on Marksman pregame. Puck drop between the Bulls and the Marksman is next. Web Carpet Company has been the finest in Fayetteville flooring since 1965. Our friendly and courteous staff will help you find the flooring of your dreams, including the best in pet-friendly carpet. Once you've selected your dream floor, our professional sales and installation teams will ensure your floor buying experience is exceptional. Visit us today on Rayford Road and at webcarpet.net. Go Archman! Look at our yard. So many anthills everywhere. Did you know that a single ant can live to be 29 years old? Really? Well, what about a married one? Seriously? <laughs> But really, uh, we need to fix the yard. St. Peter Pest Control handles all your mosquitoes, ants, spiders, cockroaches, and even rodents. St. Peter Pest Control provides full home pest protection and consistent treatment of ants and mosquitoes in your yard, too. At St. Peter Pest Control, we send all your bugs to see St. Peter. Providing patients with a relaxing environment and high-quality dental care, Carolina's Dentist offers positively different dentistry in Fayetteville, Rayford, and Spring Lake. We're in network with most insurance providers, and we offer flexible finite options to keep your dental care within reach. From cavity prevention to dramatic smile makeovers, we offer a variety of dental services for every step of your dental health journey. Consider us your home for all of your dental care needs. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome inside the Pelham Civic Complex in beautiful Pelham, Alabama. This is Fayetteville Marksman Hockey, as the Marksmen remain on the road through the middle of December, taking on the Birmingham Bulls tonight. Hi, everybody. I'm Drew Blevins. I'll be alongside with you for this one. Only three meetings between these two teams this season. Tonight will be number two. The Birmingham Bulls have the season series. One game to none. It was a win back on November 10th by a final count of 5-2. to two. A real coming out party for the offense of the Birmingham Bulls. Marksman will go from left to right across your radio dial in their road white uniforms, black breezers, white socks, black numericals. Birmingham in their traditional home reds, black breezers, and red socks with white numericals. Nick Fay will take the opening face-off for the hometown Birmingham Bulls. He'll go against the Marksman captain, Taylor McCloy, who will be flanked by Nick Mangone to the near side. And Drake Glover to the far side. Puck is dropped. Sit back, relax, and enjoy this one from Pelham, Alabama, as we're off from the Yellowhammer State. Nick Mangone driving to the puck. He'll give to McCloy in the far side corner. Taken away here by Birmingham. They're up and out to center. Deflected off of Jack Patterson as this puck will roll through the skates of Jarrett Cup and Nick Faye will dump it in. Chased back behind the net by Stepan Timofeyev as it works up the near side boards. Timofeyev calling for a low wrist shot. He railroads Brent Moran in front as the puck skitters to the far side corner. This is what Birmingham likes to do. They'll set things up and they'll be on the attack for as long as you will let them. Carson Vance feeds to the far side wing. That's Cup. Moved into the middle for McCloy and a stretch pass to Mangone. Gets the marksman back into attacking ice down the near wing. A long wrist shot well wide. Scooped up by Michael Gillespie, who is the league's leading scorer. And the Bulls are right back out beyond center. Dumped in and back of Brent Moran. Jarrett Cup, the first one there. Backhands around of Jordan Martin. It's the marksman unable to get this one out. Now Papalardo with a low wrist shot. Second opportunity off of Cup. Skate goes wide. Line is held by Artur Turchiev. Into the far side corner, Turchiev picks it up again, working up at the near side point. Centers to Gillespie, but it's back out to center and a reset for the Bulls. They'll dump it in. Around the kick play, Birmingham is offside and did not realize it, and that will give us our first whistle of the contest. Let's talk about tonight's starting goaltenders. Brett Moran getting the nod in net for the marksman, his fourth straight start. As Corey Melkert said last weekend, it's a, quote, you win, you're in mentality. Moran has a 2-9-0 Goals against average and a 9-1-2 save percentage. Meanwhile, Austin Lotz, who has had a little bit of a hot streak lately, 
He'll come in with a 4-2-1 and one record, a 2-9-4 goals against average, only an 8-8-7 save percentage. But as we told you, Birmingham is a team that's going to be okay to give up 40 shots because they feel like they're going to be able to get 50 or 60 per night. This draw is won by the Bulls. So Nick Minerva will have to go back and find the puck. Minerva missed the last game between these two teams as he was on a call up to the ECHL's Savannah Ghost Pirates. In the far side corner, the marksman unable to hold the line, and now a two-on-two -two chance down the far side wing. Toted ahead by Troy McTavish. His centering pass kicked away by Brent Moran as McTavish finds the puck in the near side corner. Marksman will take it free. This is Austin Alger, but his pass is intercepted. Floated back toward the net. Moran just steers it to the far corner. Scooped up here by Birmingham, Zach Mason. Back behind the net. The Bulls looking to set things up. Twisting up to the top is McTavish. His wrist shot kicked aside as... Kale List, excuse me, rather, Corey Tam will skate this puck out to the far boards and dump it in where Glover will go to chase. Met by his number opposite, that's McTavish. As the marksman look to find the puck, Mangone going to work for it, intercepted by Weisner, but Mangone grabs the puck inside the blue line, marksman hold the zone. Mason forges ahead with it. He's back out beyond center as Vincenzo Renda goes to get this puck. He wants to hurry to Mangone, who will pass around to Mackenzie Dwyer. It's a dump in right back behind the net. Birmingham will send it out to the far sideboards. Jarrett Cup ran into the linesman. That's going to create a chance right to the net front. And a good job getting back by Andrew Lane, who's been one of the more consistent defenders for the marksman this season. Doug Blaisdell shot off of a skate and up into the crowd. 17-10 to go first period. We remain scoreless. Before we continue, a hearty congratulations to the Melkert family and especially newly minted Dr. Paxton Melkert, that's Corey's wife, as she officially graduated with her doctorate in psychology from Duquesne University in Pittsburgh today. Congratulations to Paxton. Very much looking forward to telling you the story of the graduation here as soon as we get our next whistle. Brought ahead by FX Gerard as he'll dump it around to Blaisdell. Lott stops the puck, feeds it off the inboards, Nick Fay. Brings it up to Stefan Brucato, who last season was the captain of the Knoxville Ice Bears. Driven in here by Taylor Brierley. His centering feed intended for Tim Fayev doesn't make it. Now Nick Fay resets with a long wrist shot, tipped at the bottom of the faceoff circles over the crossbar as the marksman struggling to find possession. Papalardo kicks it free. That's Stefan Timofeyev, who will backhand to the far corner. Briarly pinching, trying to hold. Instead, it'll be Jordan Martin up to the point for a long wrist shot, punched out by Moran as this puck makes its way over Artur Turchiev and a reset to the far wing. Dumped ahead, Jordan Martin with a wrist shot into the gut of Moran, and he'll catch and hold. Corey Melkert so desperately wanted to see his wife graduate, and of course, why wouldn't you? It is one of those momentous life events that you only get one time to capture. And I thought it was one of the more heartfelt things you see in the dog days of a hockey season that he had the trainer, Kyle Sherrill, watching the graduation ceremony in the coach's office here in Birmingham. And when the College of Psychology was called up, Sherrill ran out to the ice, told Corey, and Corey hustled into the coach's office and was able to see Paxton graduate. Touching heartfelt moment. Brian Bowen charging ahead for the marksman. Look to Fornaris, who was unable to get the puck out cleanly. Now in the second effort, Fornaris runs out of space and has to back it out to Carson Vance. Feeds it ahead to Renda, who will shoot it to the near wing for Brian Bowen. Steers back for Vance, who may have a scene. Vance. Slides by his man into attacking ice, a long wrist shot, awkwardly bounces off of Lots, and it's to the far side corner where the marksman looked to set things up behind the net. Good hustle play here by Briarly, but he turns the puck over. Bowen on the backhand, high slot, couldn't hold the puck, and now Troy McTavish is out with it. His path goes off of a marksman skate and will rebound to Gillespie. Fed to the far side boards as it's just touched up ice by Ryan Romeo, one of the new signees for the Bulls. Corey Tam will watch as Brent Moran comes out of his goal crease. He wants to melt this puck again as the marksmen have been discombobulated in the first five minutes of this one just trying to get clean zone entries, and they've had no luck doing so. So the faceoff once again in front of Brent Moran. This time it will be to his blocker side. 
to draw. That's one to Mackenzie Dwyer, who will dump it back behind the net. Send Weiser to go chase. He'll yield to McTavish. Behind the net, Kale List takes it for the marksman. Stick handle to the slot, shoots it off the near boards, but it's right back out to Dwyer. They'll feed to Briarly and get it right back. Dwyer steps into a dump into the far side corner. Looking over his shoulder, Drake Glover, after missing the last four games, back in the lineup, starts the breakout. Near wing, this is Austin Alger, who flips it end over end. That'll send Nick Minerva back chasing for it. He's accosted by Zach Reimers. Minerva will find the puck, though. Slides it off the near side kick plate. Intercepted by Andrew Lane at the red line. He'll dump it in. This one takes an awkward hop off the back of the net. Minerva back to find it. Minerva to Nick Fay on the near side wing. Fay will bring it ahead. Lost the puck to Taylor McCloy. He'll fire this lollipop into the glove of Austin Lotz. And that will take us to our first media timeout. 14-10 to go first period here in Birmingham. We're scoreless between the Bulls and the Marksmen. For some, it's just the sound of ice hitting heavy-duty plastic. But for us, it's the signal calling us back to the light. And to Greg's house, because he just got a new grill. Connecting to Hot Jam's playlist. Welcome back, Bud Light legends. It's time to take summer by the coolers. Welcome back to Pelham, Alabama. Drew Blevins with you at the Pelham Civic Complex. 0-0, 14-10 to go in this opening period of play. Bulls out shooting the marksman 4-1 in the early going. And it's been one of those things that for the marksman, getting the puck out of the defensive zone has been a major struggle. I'll be interested to see what Corey Melkert's going to be able to do in the course of the first period. Is It does seem like whoever scores first is going to have a lot more momentum than perhaps initially anticipated as Lane's shot is caught by lots. That'll reset the marksman in their attacking end. Draw this time comes to the near circle. McCloy will take it. Andrew Lane and Jarrett Cup lined up as the defenseman. It's a draw that's won straight back to Doug Blaisdell for Birmingham. That'll start the breakout up ice as it's dumped in by Timofeyev. Brucato and Fay going to chase. Mangone is the first one there. Sends it to the far side wing for Patterson. Intercepted. Quick snap wrister and a good reaction save by Moran with the near side leg pad. Brought ahead by Nick Mangone, but Patterson is offside by a half step, maybe. And that will bring the face off back out to neutral ice. Jesse Burns along with Brett Dardzinski, our linesman. Mark Dungan, our referee. And that'll be the same crew for tomorrow night's contest as well. Matt McNair towing in to take this draw. Really enjoyed hearing Corey Melker talk about McNair and especially the worker that he is. Someone who just comes in and enjoys going to work in the grind. As McNair has the puck here, lost his balance for a moment. As Briarly backhands it to the far wing, intercepted by Brian Bowen. Tries to slip by his man. Bowen lost his stick on the play. Line held as Carson Vance winds and fires a shot. It's off of a defender on the way through. As Gillespie will register a block. Back behind the net, scooped up by Birmingham. Jordan Martin will leave to Briarly. Feeds the far side wing and a headman pass intercepted by Alger. Pitched back ahead, but settling the puck here and pushing it up ice is Ryan Romeo. Glover gives ahead to Alger, who will backhand to Drake Glover. Chopped out of the air by Romeo. He'll give back behind the net for Nick Minerva to reset. This is Papalardo, who deflects the pass up into the marksman bench. Out of play. 12.50 to go in this first period. Still scoreless. The 
draw will take place right in front of the Bulls bench. And a false start off the faceoff. As Brett Dardzinski wants a reset, he'll get it. This time, a clean faceoff win to Artur Turchiev. Fed to the far wing, and a headman pass is out of the reach of Wisner. Corey Tam's going to track it down, so icing is waved to the far side boards. Good pressure here by Birmingham, but it is sent up and out by Glover with one man chasing, that's Reamers. Turchiev's clearing attempt blocked initially. The Bulls are able to get it out to the red line no further. Kale List stick handles ahead to Glover as he shouldered off the puck. Reamers there with him as support. Reamers heads to the near side corner. Passes off the far boards to Tam. He'll set to list for a wrist shot. Tipped on the way through. Puck is loose and Lotz didn't know where it was. A fortunate hop as it exploded off of his leg pads and right back out into traffic. But Austin Lotz had no clue where that puck was. Kale list for the marksman in the near side corner. Gives to the near wing. FX Gerard shoots it to the far side boards. That's over everybody's stick. This will be icing. He was looking at Patterson at the far blue line and what I think was supposed to be a hard pass along the ice surface rose to knee height. 11 minutes, 52 seconds remain in the opening period of this one. Bulls and the marksman knotted up in a scoreless tie as Birmingham wins the faceoff, but it splits the defense, so they'll have to reset as Mackenzie Dwyer gives to Stefan Brucato. He looked at Timofeyev for a moment, but now a pass intercepted. Here's FX Gerard with speed. We'll leave it for Patterson and get it right back. Gerard finds Andrew Lane near side blue line. Lane steps into a wrist shot that one hops off the end boards. Picked up by Gerard at the far side hash marks. Gerard along the blue line now to Lane at the near side. Slides by his man with a pass behind the net to Jarrett Cup. Cup will leave for Patterson, but he had his stick lifted by Timofeyev, and now here's the speedy Russian. A cross ice pass to McKenzie Dwyer, who's on his horse. Low wrist shot, easily sticked aside by Moran. An awkward bounce back toward the front of the net, off the stick of Nick Fay, as the marksmen are under siege once again. Picked up by Brian Bowen, breaking it out to McCloy, who will bounce it back beyond Bowen. Good support here by Patterson, who slides it to the near side boards, looking for McCloy. Instead, taken away by Doug Blaisdell. He'll give it to the far side wing, Papalardo. Looking around with Carson Vance, who takes a good attacking angle and leaves him no room. Forced to give it up to the near side wing. Jordan Martin with a one-touch back behind the net for Gillespie. Intercepted by Carson Vance, who's unable to clear the zone as it's pushed up to the point, Blaisdale. Feeds it across for Brierley. He'll leave it back behind the net, looking for Gillespie, who overskates the puck. Now Martin centers to the tops of the faceoff circle of Papalardo. That puck is taken away by Bowen. Smacked the length of the rink, but Austin Lotz wants to go. He'll push it up ice now, Jordan Martin. High slot, he holds, he fires, misses just wide of the near side post. Picked up in front. Moran with the paddle down, having a look over his blocker side shoulder. Martin makes a move to the net as he's escorted back to the inboards by Vincenzo Renda. Renda has his man tied up. That's a great defensive play, and that will allow Carson Vance to skate it up ice. He's beyond the red line to Reamers now into attacking ice to Vance, who chips a backhander just wide of the far side post. What a rush that was from Carson Vance. Given to the near wing, Austin Alger. Plays it back behind the net as Zach Reamers will find the puck. Reamers tied up by his man, has support from Alger. A cross ice pass off the skates of Kale List. List will find it behind the net. Rotates back up to the point. He's around of his man. The pass to Glover misses him wide. And now back checking time for List. A head man pass goes beyond Ryan Romeo. And Kale List will head right back behind of Brent Moran to find the puck and begin the breakout. List. Survives one-man pressure, sends it off the far side glass. Nick Minerva tracks the puck down for Birmingham. To Mackenzie Dwyer, he'll slide it into the middle for Zach Mason, who touches into the middle for Weissner. As his pass, intended for McTavish, got tied up in traffic. The marksman once again dodge a bullet on this potent Birmingham attack. List in the near side corner, just south of nine minutes remaining in this first period. Up the near boards, it's out, Dwyer will alleviate pressure to Minerva. Slaps one in off the back kick plate and taken by Weisner as he'll try to set it up to the far side wing. Long wrist shot, steered out. As Moran clubs it back behind the cage. McCloy 
Finding the puck for the marksman will leave for Corey Tam in the trapezoid. He'll feed the far wing, looking for Patterson. Intercept to Timofeyev with a howitzer. Caught by Moran. No rebound. 8.30 to go in the first period here in Alabama. We're scoreless between the Bulls and the marksman. Tired of feeling sore? Aww. Let Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine help you. Since 1973, the doctors and physical therapists at Cape Fear Ortho have remained the experts in providing exceptional, experienced orthopedic care. From surgery to physical therapy, we can help get your body back on the right track to make you feel great again. Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, the official orthopedic provider of the Fayetteville Marksman. Welcome back to Pelham, Alabama. Drew Blevins with you in the broadcast booth. The Fayetteville Marksman and the Birmingham Bulls locked in a scoreless tie. Brent Moran has been big in the early portions of this contest. We knew how good Birmingham's offense was. I think the Marksmen have done a decent job managing, but they have struggled on the breakout at times in this game. We'll see how this one goes. To the near wing, Blaisdale jams himself between the Marksmen forward and the wall as Mangone's unable to clear the zone. Brucato feeds behind the net for Fay. His wrap chance rolls off his stick. Blaisdale holds the line. Feeds across for a long wrist shot from Jake Cass. Now on his second stint with the Bulls, that's blocked in the marksman right back out. Cass chips ahead looking for Fay. Jarrett Cup, the first one to the puck. Leaves it behind the net for Andrew Lane. Finds Nick Mangone, who's around to Blaisdale. And Mangone will dump it in as Blaisdale punishes him. Lotz will set it on a tee back behind the net, fed to the far side boards. Birmingham is up and out to the far side boards as Lotz will craftily find a way to stay in the trapezoid and not take a delay of game penalty. This is a good line hold by the marksman, but yeah, they didn't hold the line. Jesse Burns right along the blue line said that puck just did eke out to center. So the faceoff will come back out to neutral ice with 7.33 to go in this first period. Matt McNair taking the draw for the marksman, a rare faceoff loss for him as Gillespie will dump it in for Jordan Martin to go chase. Cleared around to the near boards, Brian Bowen slaps it off of a skate and right to McNair. He gives to Fornaris who tried to claw it ahead as he pawed at the puck for a moment. Now Fornaris has it, he's on side, splits the defense. Fornaris, what hands, taken down, we're all good. Renda feeds Vance, he winds and fires. Lotz makes a good save, that puck's still loose. Lotz finds it at his toe for a moment and covers with Matt McNair lurking right in front. Lotz has really struggled locating the puck here early in this game. That one got caught right there at the juncture between your foot and your leg. Good job by McNair to look for that loose change. This one will roll into Lotz and a much smoother covering of the puck. Austin Lotz, a veteran netminder, and I know that he had been frustrated at points because Hayden Stewart was that number one guy and you cannot blame the two coaches Kevin Kerr and Craig Simchuk for going to Stewart at one point he led the league in save percentage but lots making the most of this opportunity is both Birmingham netminders find themselves with a lower than 890 save percentage and that's just not going to get the job done here's Fornaris sidesteps his man forced to leave the puck in the slot McNair unable to find it, now a foot race. Renda beats out Gillespie, and this will be icing. Vincenzo Renda, I think, over the course of these first 19 games has really evolved into one of those solid defensemen. And Corey Melkert said so much himself. He said, over the past handful of games, Renda's been our best D-man. I think that's a high compliment to Vinny Renda, who played the large majority of last season in Fayetteville before being traded near the deadline to Evansville. 
Corey Melkert saw something he liked, brings Wren to back, and that has been a decision that has paid dividends so far this season. To the far side wing, Romeo swings it across, and now Nick Minerva has it near blue line. Shot through traffic just wide of the far post. Scooped up by Glover. He'll find Austin Alger who will charge ahead. Alger drops the puck. He was looking for Reamers. It will bounce back to center. Kale List shoots it up ice to Glover. He'll club it ahead into the attacking zone in the trapezoid. Lotz stops it. Mackenzie Dwyer will start the breakout to Wisner. Given to the near side wing. McTavish driving in. He'll drop for Zach Mason. A weak wrist shot scooped up in the glove of Moran. No rebound. Brett Moran's another one of those guys that I think had a trying time in his pro career. On the shelf for five straight games, and that was the longest stretch that he had gone without playing since joining the Marksman. Since then, has turned what is now four appearances into standings points in every game. And there are some who would argue, and there's a point to be made, that had there not been a poor penalty call on Saturday, December 3rd, the Marksman may very well have had all six of those points. Here's FX Girard, leads Patterson back behind the net. He'll find it and zip it back up to the point. In the skates of List, he'll float it back behind the cage. Girard goes banging for the puck. Now Patterson in. Collects and gives to Taylor McCloy at the far corner. McCloy tried to slide a pass between the legs of Mason unsuccessfully, and the Marks would have to regroup at center. Gerard dumps it in. Lotz stops it and finds Nick Minerva. Minerva quickly ahead will look to Fay. Nick Fay gets around one man but loses the puck to Andrew Lane who will rip it around to Brian Bowen who's been held without much of a threat tonight. Jake Cass settling the puck in his own zone finds Artur Turchiev. A head man pass taken away by Jarrett Cup. He'll steer to Bowen at the far wing. Brian Bowen. Four goals in the last two games. A head fake, and he's back into attacking ice. Here goes Brian Bowen, lets it go. Zips it over top the shoulder of Lotz. Now a reset for Norris on the one-timer. Fans on it. As the Bulls survive, and they're back beyond center. This is Stepan Timofeyev. A cross-ice pass. He was looking for Turchiev, who squared for a one-timer, but never got the puck. Now the marksmen stretch it out. They're looking for Bowen, who is all the way at the attacking blue line. Intercepted by Fay. He'll float it in, and the marksmen have to reset. Jarrett Cup. Hard charges to the red line. Dumps it in behind the net. Blaisdale in the trapezoid. Starts it to the far side boards, looking to break this puck out for Birmingham. Blaisdale gets tied up and loses the puck to Glover. He finds Reamers, who digs off the backside of the near goal post. Oh, it looked like it was going to float in, and Reamers was going to open the scoring. What a chance now. Vance with a blast. Caught by Lotz. And that'll take us to a break. 3.44 to go in the opening frame. The marksman inches from drawing first blood, but held without a goal. Hey, you. Are you hearing this but not seeing this? Hey. Hey, you. Are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. Zach Reamers, Mirror inches away from giving the Marksman a 1-0 lead here in Birmingham. As it stands, 3.44 to go first period. We remain scoreless. It's been one of those games that there's not a lot of action to report, but it's been good. It's been back and forth. Both teams have created chances. I think the Marksmen have absorbed this Birmingham attack rather nicely, although it is a shorthanded group without Carson Rosen who touches it in, but Carson Vance has the puck. A crafty play to Renda to the near side corner. He'll begin the breakout. Brian Bowen hauled down by Minerva. will keep going to the far side corner. Papalardo touches to Jordan Martin. 
Tried to get around Renda and did, but lost the puck as it will roll to Brent Moran, who will melt it with 3.07 to go in the first period. And a conversation at the far side goal post between the Marksmen and the Bulls. A lot of that, we'll call it tenacity, that grit missing from the Bulls lineup. is That is the part of the game of the captain, Mike Davis, that has endeared him to the fans here in Birmingham. They like to see the rough stuff. Davis suspended for it last weekend. Will miss tonight's game. Expected to be back in the lineup tomorrow. And he took as much time as he could during the morning skate today to exert himself. He was going full speed, doing laps around the arena, just trying to get that blood flow and at least simulate a game's worth of energy. Tam to the far yes. wing, over the stick of Glover, shot through traffic, tipped in, they score. It'll be Wisner's goal as he was the one who had the tip in front of the shot from Nick Minerva, and the Birmingham Bulls strike first. Time of the goal will be 17 minutes and 16 seconds into the first period. For Wisner, his second goal of the season, his other goal also came against the Marksman. And that is a big blow if the Marksman can't find a way to get that back quickly because you thought Fayetteville was generating a little bit of offensive momentum and maybe had something going and not to be. Near boards, Mackenzie Dwyer standing just behind his own blue line. Gives it ahead, step on Timofeyev, dumps it in behind the net. Moran in the trapezoid to play it to the far side wing. That's McCloy. As it's tipped off of his stick, this is going to go the distance for icing. 2.09 to go first period. And the draw will come all the way back to Brent Moran's end. Not a lot Moran could do there. That's a, a different style of offense generated by the Birmingham Bulls. It's, they're not known for the shot from the point they want to create off the rush. Cup taken down back behind the net. Arxman bench wanted a penalty. They will get none. Gillespie tries to dump it in. It goes off of a skate and is kicked right back out to the red line. Dwyer loses the puck and a chance for the Marksman. This is Jack Patterson. Backhands ahead looking for Bowen. The pass just too far for him. Right back behind the net. Jake Cass gives to the near side wing. Mackenzie Dwyer. His pass intercepted again, this time by McNair, who will dump it in. Behind the net, this is Cass. Gives to Dwyer, who headmans to Jordan Martin. He wants to punch it back to Papalardo. Now to Martin. He's got Papalardo driving. Martin instead gives to the trailer, who's Gillespie. Far corner. He swipes it toward the net. McNair blocks it. Marksman just trying to skate this one out. This is Carson Vance. Finds Renda as an outlet. Renda. Lumbers up the ice, looking for Brian Bowen. Gillespie intercepts his pass. Drops for Romeo. And at the near side corner, this is Gillespie. To Romeo, Gillespie again. Walking to the point, gives to the far side wing. Artur Turchiev dumps it back behind the net for Jordan Martin. Picked up by Weisner as he'll feed it to the far side wing. Here's a centering pass for Zach Mason. Into the far corner now. Mason calling for it, unable to settle was Turchiev. The Bulls will have to reset. Mason pushes to the near wing. McTavish shoots, punched away by Brent Moran. McTavish in the near side corner, held up by Carson Vance. It's going in to dig for this puck is Matt McNair. Vance leaning on his man. It's not cleared as Romeo holds the line. Romeo gives to McTavish. He'll pitch to the far boards. Weisner sets up Turchiev. His wrist shot blocked on the way through. Marksman will flip it up ice beyond the reach of Bowen. 13 seconds to go. Icing is waved, so that will pretty much do it for this period. As the Bulls will settle the puck right back behind of Austin Lotz. Three seconds on the clock, two and one. That's where the horn will sound. And at the end of the first period, the Birmingham Bulls have a 1-0 lead on the Fayetteville Marksman. Shots on goal in the opening period for the Birmingham Bulls 12. For the Fayetteville Marksman, four.
We'll be right back after these messages to recap all the action for you. We'll talk about the goal. You'll also have a chance to hear from Carlos Fornarist. This is Marksman Hockey. For some, it's just the sound of ice hitting heavy duty plastic. But for us, it's the signal calling us back to the light. And to Greg's house, because he just got a new grill. Connecting to Hot Jam's playlist. Welcome back, Bud Light legends. It's time to take summer by the coolers. Have you been hurt? Tired of feeling sore? Aww. Let Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine help you. Since 1973, the doctors and physical therapists at Cape Fear Ortho have remained the experts in providing exceptional, experienced orthopedic care. From surgery to physical therapy, we can help get your body back on the right track to make you feel great again. Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, the official orthopedic provider of the Fayetteville Marksman. The goal of the Fayetteville Area Metropolitan Planning Organization is to develop plans that will provide the safest and most efficient transportation while protecting and enhancing the environment. On your way to your next Marksman game, remember, you can walk, carpool, or use the FAST app to track transit system buses. Marky travels green, and you should too, with FAMPO. Hey, hey you, are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. Web Carpet Company has been the finest in Fayetteville flooring since 1965. Our friendly and courteous staff will help you find the flooring of your dreams, including the best in pet-friendly carpet. Once you've selected your dream floor, our professional sales and installation teams will ensure your floor buying experience is exceptional. Visit us today on Rayford Road and at webcarpet.net. Go Marksman! Look at our yard. So many anthills everywhere. Did you know that a single ant can live to be 29 years old? Really? Well, what about a married one? Seriously? <laughs> but really, uh, we need to fix the yard. St. Peter Pest Control handles all your mosquitoes, ants, spiders, cockroaches, and even rodents. St. Peter Pest Control provides full home pest protection and consistent treatment of ants and mosquitoes in your yard, too. At St. Peter Pest Control, we send all your bugs to see St. Peter. Providing patients with a relaxing environment and high quality dental care, Carolina's Dentist offers positively different dentistry in Fayetteville, Rayford, and Spring Lake. We're a network with most insurance providers, and we offer flexible finite options to keep your dental care within reach. From cavity prevention to dramatic smile makeovers, we offer a variety of dental services for every step of your dental health journey. Consider us your home for all of your dental care needs. Experience the thrill of being a Fayetteville Marksman season ticket holder and all the benefits that come along with it, including your same great seat for 28 or 14 home games, exclusive season ticket member events, and an opportunity to enjoy discounts on food and beverage and merchandise at the Crown Coliseum. Skate to MarksmanHockey.com backslash season tickets to learn more. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here.
A disappointing start in the result of the first period for the Fayetteville Marksmen as they trail the Birmingham Bulls 1-0 after the first period of play. I thought the Marksmen, though, they competed. They were right there for most of that period. The breakout has been a struggle. We knew that was going to be something this team was going to have to sharpen going into tonight's game. But it's not one of these situations where you're just going to go, ah, well, Marksmen are overmatched and pack it up. Quite the opposite. I thought the Marksmen were overmatched after the first period the last time they were here back on November 10th, now five weeks ago. And that's not the case here. They're competing. They're right there. They're in this game. They've got a solid goaltending performance from Brent Moran to this point. They've created some traffic around of Austin Lots. It's a matter of pushing that extra step to put the puck in the net. Fact is, if you're the Fayetteville Marksman, it, it really is a game to three. The Marksman have scored three or more in every one of their wins. They're not hemorrhaging losses when they're in, in a situation that they're not scoring three because it's either been you hit three, you win, or you don't hit three and you lose. I mean, it's been that simple for the Marksman, but there's still plenty of time left in this game. I also thought it was interesting, and, and this is not a knock on the officials. This has just been the way the game's been played. No penalties in that opening period, none at all, and, and not any that were particularly close to being penalties, might I add, as well. So it's 20 minutes of good, clean hockey, and the Birmingham Bulls get a goal from Matt Wisner, his second of the year, on a deflected shot from Nick Minerva. That goal comes 17-16 into the first period, and that is where the Birmingham Bulls take their lead 1-0. We caught up with Carlos Fornaris prior to tonight's contest. You'll hear from him right after this. This is Marksman Hockey. Kelly, Kelly, you need to unmute yourself. For some, it's just the sound of ice hitting heavy duty plastic. But for us, it's the signal calling us back to the light. And to Greg's house, because he just got a new grill. Connecting to Hot Jam's playlist. Welcome back, Bud Light legends. It's time to take summer by the coolers. Have you been hurt? <coughs> Tired of feeling sore? Aww. Let Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine help you. Since 1973, the doctors and physical therapists at Cape Fear Ortho have remained the experts in providing exceptional, experienced orthopedic care. From surgery to physical therapy, we can help get your body back on the right track to make you feel great again. Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, the official orthopedic provider of the Fayetteville Marksman. The goal of the Fayetteville Area Metropolitan Planning Organization is to develop plans that will provide the safest and most efficient transportation while protecting and enhancing the environment. On your way to your next Marksman game, remember, you can walk, carpool, or use the FAST app to track transit system buses. Marky travels green, and you should too, with FAMPO. Hey, hey you. Are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. We welcome you back to Marksman Hockey. Drew Blevins joined by forward Carlos Fornaris. Carlos, seems that you've once again found that offensive touch. Hasn't necessarily come scoring goals. You have five on the season, but it's come in the form of a lot of assists. What's been the magic to being able to unlock that portion of your game? Uh, you know, I got to give a lot of credit to my teammates no because, you know, being, having assists is uh, you rely on your teammates to, to kind of get the goals and, you know, they're, they're getting open and putting themselves in scoring opportunities. And so playing with guys like Bowen, you know, who's, who's a great goal scorer and, uh, I mean, we have a lot of great goal scorers, so, I mean, that really helps with uh, getting assists. So. Well, and you talked about Brian Bowen, who scored four goals over the course of the last two games, added that bonus assist on your most recent goal in Macon. That ended up being the game winner. What's the chemistry been like between you two, somebody who wasn't on the roster when you last played for the Marksman last season? Um, you know, I, I feel like Bowen's just a goal scorer and I'm just a playmaker, and, and uh, that's kind of a combo that's 
really deadly to have on a team. And, um, you know, we kind of just stayed with it. We were getting a bunch of scoring chances, and, and, and Brian was just getting a bunch of great A scoring chances, and he was getting a little frustrated, but we knew that it was going to come. And like you said, he's got four in the last two games, and I really think he's going to catch fire here, and, and things are going to heat up, so it's going to be good for us. You were someone who had 12 points in eight games last year here with the Fayetteville Marksman before your call-up to the ECHL. Something I ask everyone who has been up at the ECHL level is, what have you learned from the hockey up there being in a direct NHL pipeline? What are some of the lessons that you've been able to learn that have impacted your game here now? Um, you know, going up, I think just the most important thing is being a good teammate and uh, knowing your role. Like, when I went up there, I knew I wasn't going to be the top guy. I knew that I needed to play a role, and I was willing to play that role. And um, that's just a huge thing for every team, even down here. You know, guys knowing their role and being okay with it and not being toxic, and uh, that's what builds winning teams. So, um, yeah, just I, I, that's kind of pretty much it. Though. <laughs> We talk about critical games in the month of uh, in the month of March and in April as you're making the playoff push. Knowing that you guys are right now in ninth, slightly outside the playoff picture, but are just four points out of third place. How much added emphasis is there, knowing that a good weekend now is going to throw you right back into the playoff picture and could start pushing you up to one of those top four seeds? Yeah, I mean that's definitely on the back of our mind. You know that like a big weekend like that would push us up top, and um, I think we just got to stay focused and like take it five minutes at a time and uh just play our game and then those wins are going to come and and just kind of not think about it too much because if that's what's on our mind while we're out there then you know we might be gripping our sticks a little tight and uh not playing in flow state so just kind of five minutes at a time and trust the systems and play our game carlos thanks for your time thank you drew he's carlos fornaris forward for the fayetteville marksman we'll be right back with more marksman hockey right after these messages web carpet company has been the finest in fayetteville flooring since 1965. our friendly and courteous staff will help you find the flooring of your dreams including the best in pet friendly carpet once you've selected your dream floor, our professional sales and installation teams will ensure your floor buying experience is exceptional. Visit us today on Rayford Road and at webcarpet.net. Go Irishman! Look at our yard. So many anthills everywhere. Did you know that a single ant can live to be 29 years old? Really? Well, what about a married one? Seriously? <laughs> But really, uh, we need to fix the yard. St. Peter Pest Control handles all your mosquitoes, ants, spiders, cockroaches, and even rodents. St. Peter Pest Control provides full home pest protection and consistent treatment of ants and mosquitoes in your yard, too. At St. Peter Pest Control, we send all your bugs to see St. Peter. Providing patients with a relaxing environment and high-quality dental care, Carolina's Dentist offers positively different dentistry in Fayetteville, Rayford, and Spring Lake. We're in network with most insurance providers, and we offer flexible finite options to keep your dental care within reach. From cavity prevention to dramatic smile makeovers, we offer a variety of dental services for every step of your dental health journey. Consider us your home for all of your dental care needs. Experience the thrill of being a Fayetteville Marksman season ticket holder and all the benefits that come along with it, including your same great seat for 28 or 14 home games, exclusive season ticket member events, and an opportunity to enjoy discounts on food and beverage and merchandise at the Crown Coliseum. Skate to MarksmanHockey.com backslash season tickets to learn more. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce. Because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here.
Welcome back to Birmingham, Alabama. Drew Blevins alongside you. Let's go for a quick spin around the SPHL. It's a barn burner in Macon, Georgia right now. The Roanoke Rail Yard Dogs leading Macon 3-2 in a game that's had a lot of offense. And one where Macon is once again fighting, and they're really enjoying having Rhett Kingston back from his ECHL call-up. At the end of the first period, the Knoxville Ice Bears have a 2-1 lead over the Vermilion County Bobcats. Pensacola leading Huntsville at the hangar. That's a game to keep a sharp eye on. And after an overtime win by Quad City yesterday morning, the Storm Trail, the Peoria Rivermen, 2-0 at the Carver Arena. It's the Rivermen looking to extend their lead as the top team in the SPHL. Meanwhile, it's a good one here in Birmingham. Second period puck drop between the Marksman and the Bulls is next. one nothing, Beham. Experience the thrill of being a Fayetteville Marksman season ticket holder and all the benefits that come along with it, including your same great seat for 28 or 14 home games, exclusive season ticket member events, and an opportunity to enjoy discounts on food and beverage and merchandise at the Crown Coliseum. Skate to MarksmanHockey.com backslash season tickets to learn more. Look at our yard. So many anthills everywhere. Did you know that a single ant can live to be 29 years old? Really? Well, what about a married one? Seriously? <laughs> but really, uh, we need to fix the yard. St. Peter Pest Control handles all your mosquitoes, ants, spiders, cockroaches, and even rodents. St. Peter Pest Control provides full home pest protection and consistent treatment of ants and mosquitoes in your yard, too. At St. Peter Pest Control, we send all your bugs to see St. Peter. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here. Web Carpet Company has been the finest in Fayetteville flooring since 1965. Our friendly and courteous staff will help you find the flooring of your dreams, including the best in pet-friendly carpet. Once you've selected your dream floor, our professional sales and installation teams will ensure your floor buying experience is exceptional. Visit us today on Rayford Road and at webcarpet.net. Go Irishman! Welcome back to Birmingham, Alabama. Drew Blevins with you as the Fayetteville Marksmen prepare for period number two. The Birmingham Bulls leading 1-0 and a goal from Matt Weissner. Marksmen will go from right to left across your radio dial here in the second period. And they need to find offense in one of the worst ways possible. Decent crowd here on a Friday night in Birmingham. Tomorrow, though, you can expect it to be one of the really hostile environments as it's Peanuts Night tomorrow night. The Marksman will celebrate Peanuts Night coming up on Saturday, December 31st against the Quad City Storm. Given to the far wing, this is in the skates of Brucato. As he loses possession of the puck, just swiping at it, gets it to Timofeyev, who has Faye going with him. Timofeyev to do it himself, robbed by Brent Moran. What a stop with the glove. Here's the reset behind the net. Holding as Timofeyev gives for a one-timer from Romeo off the end wall. Moran wanted to cover. He cannot find it. Up to the point, dumped right back in. This will be held by Jarrett Cup as he'll give to the near wing, looking at Patterson. Dumped in by Taylor Brierly. Back behind the net, Jarrett Cup will be the first to retrieve it. Brierly getting off on a change here as Cup will snap it ahead off the stick of Nick Mangone, and the Marksman will get a change of their own a minute gone by here in this second period. That's a huge stop from Brent Moran, though, and one that the Marksman needed to have in that moment. Circle that one if the Marksman find a way to come back. 
Here's McNair, a headman pass. He's got Bowen, who was just on side, but the pass off of his backhand sails to the far side corner. Fornaris and Vance charging in to hold this puck. McNair cannot, and now it's Gillespie with Popolardo driving the net. He toe drags and fires. Moran gets a piece of it with the top of his leg pad. Now Fornaris trying to bring it up ice. This is the style of play that Birmingham is known for having. Gillespie dumps it in, just up and down, back and forth, and hope you strapped your seat belts in because you're going 0 to 90 in about 2.3. Now here's a shot tipped on the way through. Knocked down Moran, punches a rebound chance out. McKenzie Dwyer's bid was knocked away. Fornaris will feed to Matt McNair. McNair bodied off the puck. Bowen had it for a moment. Now he lost it, and Papalardo is going to take it up ice. Papalardo curls to McTavish off of his forehand and harmlessly into the near corner. Backhands to Jake Cass for a long shot, tipped over top of the net by Gillespie. He's gassed and will get off for a change. Matt McNair looking up ice, backhands around of Wisner. This is over the stick of Mackenzie Dwyer. Chased back by Cass. It's the marksman also getting fresh legs. Far wing battling through contact and looking for the puck was Reamers. Instead, cleared back by Birmingham. Kale List feeds it off the inboards, and quickly the marksmen snap it up ice. Corey Tam bounced it off of Mark Duncan. He'll reset to Kale List. Near wing Glover punches it ahead. Austin Alger has a step. He'll drop for Glover. His shot over the crossbar. Wisner chasing the puck as Corey Tam pinches. Backhands to Drake Glover behind the net as he'll wrestle with Nick Minerva to the near side wing. This is Kale List. Lost the puck for a moment. Alger now with help from Reamers. Back behind the net. This is off the outside skirting. Glover will give to Austin Alger. Alger drops for Glover in the far side corner. He'll spin away from pressure. Low wrist shot. Kicked aside by Brierley. And he'll start the breakout. Near side board, Zach Mason. Charging back and back checking Reamers as Mason's shot is wide. Doug Blaisdale holds the line. His wrist shot off the inboards. Right back in front, Moran got across to the near side post. So I got another big save. That one on Brucato. Now to the near wing. The Bulls looking for the puck. They've got it. Held here by Nick Fay. Still turn with it to Brucato. High slot. His wrist shot blocked by Tam. Glover pulls out the pitching wedge and will just send it all the way down to the far faceoff circle. His team getting off on a change as the Bulls will dump it in. That's off of a stick high into the protective netting and out of play. Merciful heavens, what pace to the first three minutes and 50 seconds of this second period. Brent Moran logging a couple of big saves. Good chance for the marksman going the other way. But the marksman want to play that established zone type of offense. They do not want to have to go up and down with you. And there are players that can do it, but it's a marksman team that doesn't have the overall 1-10 to 10 forward speed of this Birmingham group. Minerva winds and fires off the back wall. Now Blaisdale tees it up, misses over the bar. Picked up by Martin, a one-touch to Minerva. Now to Jordan Martin in the near side corner, raked away by Fornaris. Feeds it to Brian Bowen, but Doug Blaisdale cuts him off. Blaisdale chips it back through center. Carson Vance will take it for Fayetteville. Vance to the near side wing, Fornaris dumps it in. It bounces off the far corner boards, and Blaisdale will have it. Blaisdale setting things up for Jordan Martin ahead of the red line. He'll backhand it in. This is a lollipop to the near side corner taken by Michael Gillespie. He turns and fires through traffic. Nobody home. Now Cass picks up the puck. Jake Cass twists back behind the net. Looking at Martin, who will have the puck watched by Bowen. Gives it up to the point where Turchiev will find Jake Cass. A low wrist shot tipped in front. Gillespie now on the rebound. Moran ready for them both as the marksman chip it ahead. Fornaris is going to skate it out with control to the red line. He'll flip it into the far side corner. Austin Lotz back behind the net will stop it. Feeds the far side corner. The head man pass to Wisner. One man to beat. He's forced just to poke it around of Jarrett Cup. It's Andrew Lane. will drive back and find Taylor McCloy. Backhands to the near wing. Patterson gives it up ice. Jake Cass on his horse. FX Gerard hustling as well. Cass beats him by a half step. We'll find Turchiev. He'll feed the far wing. That's Wisner. Chipped ahead looking for Zach Mason. It's cut off by Lane as he tries to push it up ice for FX Gerard. Lane's going to do it himself. Just dumping it in back behind the net. 14.30 to go second period. 1-0 Bowles to the far side corner. Artur Turchiev feeds the far side wing. Now Mason lost the puck. Here's Taylor McCloy with it, trying to get around of Turchiev. He does. Had the puck poked away from him. He'll dump it right back in as the marksmen go to chase. This is Reamers. 
gives. Back behind the net, nobody home. Turchiev's going to take it and break it out to Troy McTavish right up Broadway. McTavish to the far red line, has help from Weisner. Dumped in, McTavish is offside. He's going to get off on a change as the marksmen go back to retrieve the puck. A headman pass, intercepted by Mackenzie Dwyer. Dwyer down the far side, boards, and offside is Stefan Brucato, and that will give us a break. 13.57 to go second period. Bulls hanging on to a 1-0 lead. Experience the thrill of being a Fayetteville Marksman season ticket holder and all the benefits that come along with it, including your same great seat for 28 or 14 home games, exclusive season ticket member events, and an opportunity to enjoy discounts on food and beverage and merchandise at the Crown Coliseum. Skate to MarksmanHockey.com backslash season tickets to learn more. We welcome you back to Birmingham. Drew Blevins alongside you in the broadcast booth. Bulls have a 1-0 lead on the Fayetteville Marksman. 13.57 to go in this second period. Longer this game goes, I think, without another goal scored, the more important the quote-unquote next one becomes. I think the marksman may have been caught napping coming out of that intermission break. And now that you're back into it, if you're the marksman, you, you simply cannot afford to give up another one here. It's a draw that is won by the marksman as Drake Glover has it on the near wing. Flips it over top of Ryan Romeo, who may have gotten his stick up into his skates. Nonetheless, Glover will go to fight for the puck. The near side boards, Alger sends it down the near wing to Reamers as Glover took a shot up high. We're going to keep going as it'll be brought ahead. And Nick Fay turns and looks behind the net. He was looking for Brucato. Now to Mackenzie Dwyer. He fires and scores. Mackenzie Dwyer from the tops of the faceoff circle beats Moran cleanly. 2-0 Birmingham. Goal will come six minutes and 32 seconds into the second period. For Dwyer, his second of the season. And that's a big one for Birmingham. Marksman looking to get it back as they'll charge ahead back behind the net. Birmingham, the first one there. Briarly gives to Gillespie who is unable to hold the puck for very long. As the marksman have it, charging up the far wing. Briarly settling the puck, one man pressure. He is dropped by Nick Mangone. And now it's shot right back toward Austin Lotz, who had got railroaded by his own man. Centering feed, great stop by Lotz. Robbing Matt McNair as he got across, lunging a rising slapper from the point, caught by Lotz, and now an altercation at the net front. Briarly getting a couple of shots in on Mangone after Nick Mangone promptly dropped him to the ice. That may be what it takes for the marksman. It's good to see Nick Mangone being that pesky player who will get under your skin. Attacking zone draw for the marksman. And keep in mind, if. If that clear an attempt had been on net and gone in, the goal would have been good. Because Lotz was taken out by his own man who slid on a fresh patch of ice. That would have been one of the stranger ones. Marksman going to work as Alger feeds the point Kale List. Chips behind the net, turning with it. McNair wraps off of a skate and Lotz finds it. It bounced off of Nick Minerva, and Austin Lotz covers the puck rapidly, keeping his team in the driver's seat 2-0. 12.35 to go in this second period. Bulls leading the marksman as we near the halfway point of this hockey game. Reamers off the draw, shoots right into some skates. Corey Tam will feed it back behind the net, looking for Alger. This one takes an awkward hop in front! 
McTavish had the puck for a moment as it slid right back behind the net. Reamers coughs it up, and the Bolts clear off the far side boards. This is going to roll a long way, but it will not reach for icing. Tam off the skates of McCloy, who will kick it to Jack Patterson. Feeds it up ice, looking for a one-timer over the stick of FX Gerard. Good chance generated there as the Bulls will flip this one all the way out. Andrew Lane catches up to it at the faceoff circles in his own end. Retreats back behind the net as he's punished by McTavish. Puck in the air, scooped by Matt Weisner. Gives to Dwyer. Fakes the slap shot. Curls now fires through traffic just wide of the far side post. Broken stick back behind the net. It belongs to FX Gerard. Ryan Peralt, the equipment manager, has a new one ready to go as Brian Bowen is going to come on for a change. Dwyer hammers one. Big rebound in front. Scooped right back to McKenzie Dwyer, but he coughs up the puck, and the marksman have it on a two-on-two rush. McCloy buries his head. He'll drop for Patterson. His wrist shot caught by Lotz. The rookie robbed by the veteran goaltender as Jack Patterson created a great chance at the tops of the faceoff circle, and with a little extra panache, Austin Lotz with a big stop. The marksmen are finding life in this game. But like we said, it's not, the, it's not a matter of a dead effort. It's a matter of the puck's just not going in right now. Face off in the far circle of the marksman attacking end. 11.29 to go, second period, 2-0 Bulls. Marksman win it. Here's a drive by Bowen, turned aside by Lotz. Now the rebound chance, still loose in front, swept wide in the near side post. The Marksman regroup. It's been the best offensive effort of the Marksman this entire hockey game. Renda banging bodies back behind the net to Fort Norris. He'll go to work with Matt McNair. McNair pressured and backhands to the far side corner. to go back behind the net for Bowen. Touches in front. It's loose. Swept that. Lots somehow survives it. And the Bulls will send it right up the near side boards all the way down to the Marksman end. Carson Vance will reset for Fayetteville. Charges ahead, snaps it in off of Brierley. So the Marksman will go to work back behind the net. Here's McNair on the four check. Given to the far side boards. This is Brierley as the Marksman will be forced to sag back and receive the oncoming onslaught. Stefan Brucato down the far wing. He centers off of a Marksman defenseman as Nick Fay will find the loose puck. Nick Fay drops into the near side corner. Now a one-timer from Timofeyev turned aside by Brent Moran. Reamers will knock it back to Jarrett Cup and the Marksman reset now. 10.20 to go in this second period. Chug chugging after the puck here is Reamers off of his skate, but right to Brierley. Jordan Martin, backhands up ice. Here's Artur Turchiev, cuts to center. Puts a pass into the skates of Ryan Romeo. And the Bulls looking for possession here, cannot find it. This is Jarrett, cup for the marksman. To the near wing, Drake Glover, chips into the blue line. It is not out. Turchiev will hold the line. Marksman get it out of the second effort to the near wing. Nick Minerva feeds the far wing and a headman pass for Michael Gillespie. Gives to Papalardo. He lets it go. Good stop by Moran with the blocker. The reset up to the point. Long drive from Blaisdale. That one was a little bit of heartburn for the marksman as Moran finds it with his stick up to the far side boards. Blaisdale to Gillespie. Met stick to stick by McCloy, but Gillespie has it again. Gillespie. Fires a pass to the back door just wide of Martin. Jake Cass will find Jordan Martin in the near corner. Met by Jarrett Cup and the marksman break it out. Andrew Lane pushes to the far side wing. Here's Jack Patterson who had a good chance a moment ago. Working against Turchiev. Patterson spins away from pressure. Pool cues it back behind the net looking for McCloy. Instead it will be cleared to Carson Vance near blue line. Dumps it to McCloy in the near side corner. His pass goes through a couple of skates, and the marksmen find it. Back behind the net, Carson Vance centers to the high slot. He was looking for the driving Taylor McCloy. It's intercepted. Martin is met by Brian Bowen. Fornaris pokes it ahead. This has been the line that's really gotten the offense going for the marksmen. Chasing ahead is Brian Bowen. Turchiev to Jake Cass. He's going to stretch it all the way out. It's wide of Wisner, but he's the first one up ice, so no icing. Vincenzo Renda. Curls it back up through the middle. A diving play made by McNair. He's right back up as Mackenzie Dwyer holds the puck. Gives to the point. Drive. Here it comes. A good block by Bowen getting back on the drive from McTavish. Now Corey Tam for the marksman. Spins around to the near boards. Tam flips it up to Ford Aris. This is end over end. It's going to roll just beyond the goal line. That will be icing and will take us to a break. 8-16 to go in the second period here in Birmingham. 2-0 Bulls. 
yard. So many anthills everywhere. Did you know that a single ant can live to be 29 years old? Really? Well, what about a married one? Seriously? <laughs> but really, uh, we need to fix the yard. St. Peter Pest Control handles all your mosquitoes, ants, spiders, cockroaches, and even rodents. St. Peter Pest Control provides full home pest protection and consistent treatment of ants and mosquitoes in your yard, too. At St. Peter Pest Control, we send all your bugs to see St. Peter. The Fayetteville Marksmen have been stymied by the goaltending of Austin Lotz and by this Birmingham defense. Keep in mind, the last time we were here, the Bulls had 64 shots on net. Jason Pulaski, 59 save performance officially. It does not look like we're going to reach that obscene total here today. But nonetheless, the Bulls offense has found a way to strike twice. The Marksman looking to get a little bit of something back here. We'll see if they're able to as Weisner sends it back behind the net, centered by Mason, but right to the Marksman. Here's Fornaris with it. He'll shoot it to the near side corner. That'll send McNair to go chase for it. Lots steers it into the skates of Ryan Romeo. Give it to the near boards. This puck is out. McTavish carries it ahead and goes to the near side corner. McTavish tying up Kale List, who holds good position to feed to the far side wing, and the Marksman are right back out to center. Dwyer intercepts, gives it to Romeo, calmly one touches to Mason, but it's tied up in the skates of Corey Tam as he'll feed it off the near side boards, right back but to Mackenzie Dwyer for the Bulls. Dwyer will play pitch and catch with Romeo as Dwyer sends it to the near wing, dumped in by Stepan Timofeyev to the end wall, one-man pressure, that's Nick Fay. Now Timofeyev joining in on the four check as the marksmen get pinned at the far boards. Patterson gets it out with help from McCloy. But nonetheless, here's Nick Fay to Timofeyev. Charges ahead with it, finds Fay behind the net. A touch to Bercato and now up for Blaisdell. A foot race. McCloy going against Blaisdell. This will be icing. Why? That was a bad pass. And Mark Dungan's going to say that's a face off at center ice. That's a poor call. Good job by the officials to get together and recognize that that was a misblown whistle. Still for the marksman, though, that hurts because it felt like McCloy was going to be able to pressure the lumbering Blaisdell, and instead, it's draw from center. Will force you to go at least 100 feet. Minerva will take the puck to Blaisdell. He'll find Jordan Martin ahead of the red line, flipped end over end off of Carson Vance, who will settle the puck. Marksman bank it off the near boards out, but right to Minerva. He'll fly in Blaisdell, who will dump it in off of a Birmingham stick. One-man pressure from Papalardo. Minerva pinches in, trying to hold the line here. Got around Reamers. This is Jordan Martin. Now Reamers coming back, finds the puck. He's around to Martin. Dumps it off the far side boards. Right back to the Birmingham Bulls. Minerva shoots it in. This is off of a Marksman stick high. Touch by Vincenzo Renda. Giving up ice. That puck... Played with a high stick, waved off by Mark Dungan. And now Carson Vance will have it. Dumps it off the near side boards. Mangone will chase it back behind the net. Mangone is punished by Briarly as the Bulls will dump it ahead. Foot race time. Renda, two steps ahead of Gillespie, is going to hold off and let Moran cover this puck with 6.01 to go in the second period. You're okay with that call if you're the Fayetteville marksman. It's Gives you a whistle, gets a tired group off. You control the pace of play on your own terms. And those are all really important things. Matt McNair will take the draw against Troy McTavish. And it's kicked back by McTavish to Briarly. Briarly will charge in, looking for space. He's got none to go to. Bowen. Whacking at the puck, trying to get it out. He does to Fornaris. Now to Bowen up the far side boards. Zach Mason back checking. Sends it off of Bowen's skate in the second effort to the point held by Andrew Lane. He'll backhand to the far side corner. Mason finding the puck for Birmingham will create some space back behind the net for Taylor Briarly. Fed to the far side wing. This is Zach Mason. 
Mason driving in, will drop for McTavish. A low backhander, stopped by Moran. He finds the rebound and will melt the puck. 5.27 to go, second period. 2-0 Bulls in the lead. Once again, the Marksmen find themselves in a tight contest, and this is a ton of progress for this Fayetteville group. There have been some games on the road that have gotten out of hand in the first 30 minutes, and then it's all perfunctory. This is a team that is competing in this game. Taylor McCloy, the captain, towing in, wins the faceoff to FX Girard. His breakout pass off of a skate, now a centering feed as Timofeyev had squared up, but Faye's pass doesn't make it to him. Now to the near wing, this is Drake Glover. Cuts to the red line, backhands to the near corner. McCloy will go to chase. Wraps up around to Brucato, but first to the puck is Ryan Romeo. To Nick Fay. his pass is taken away by the marksman. Now Andrew Lane onside with McCloy. No, they're not. Jesse Burns right along the blue line says the marksmen are offside. The faceoff will come back out to neutral ice. 5.02 to go second period, 2-0 Bulls. Marksmen win the draw cleanly. Jarrett Cup at the red line. Snaps in the dump. FX Gerard has it at the far side hash marks. Pitches to McCloy, his centering pass too wide for Glover. Bulls get it out and now have a three on two rush. Nick Fay down the near side wing, squares it up. Timofeyev was met stick to stick by Drake Glover. He's got a reset at the point. Timofeyev floats it on net off the chest of Brent Moran with Fay digging for the loose puck. Moran covers it, and that will take us to our final media timeout of the second period. 4.37 to go in the middle frame. 2 nothing Bulls. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here. It's been a tight game. It's been an entertaining game for the Fayetteville Marksmen, though. They want to find some offense, and they want to find a goal in the next 4.37 before we head to the intermission break. As we told you coming into the contest, the Marksmen are sitting right outside the playoff picture. They're out of the playoff picture by a single standings point. But in all of this conglomeration of hockey teams, the crazy part about it all is that the Marksmen are just four points out of what would be a three-way tie for third. The Roanoke Rail Yard Dogs have 22 standings points, looking to make it 24. Low wrist shot by Mangold. Now Mackenzie Dwyer getting into it with Mangold. Walks him to the end boards. Those two lock arms. And everyone will stand and watch as Mackenzie Dwyer, 6-1, takes on Nick Mangone, 5-10. It's a good hard-nosed play by Nick Mangone. And it's not that he was looking for that contact either, but we'll see if that will spurn the marksman on. I don't imagine there will be penalties after this. Bulls coaching staff directing the way they want this faceoff lined up as the marksman will go square, even, and balanced. They win it. This one's hacked on net by Vance, but it flooded on him, so it's an easy save for Austin Lotz. And the faceoff from the same circle near side the marksman attacking zone. 424 to go second period. This draw won by Birmingham as they'll look for a breakout up the near side boards. Gillespie unable to rake it free. Dwyer now has to reset. Shoots it right off of a marksman player who is Mangone. The Bulls find the loose puck. They'll flip it off the far glass all the way down. Renda catches up to it before it's icing. 
Backhands through the near wing for Austin Alger. A pass goes off of Carson Vance back to center. So the Marks will have to chase here. Dwyer's pass tipped but makes it to Pappalardo. Feeds it for Jordan Martin. He lets it go but was affected by a Wren to back checking. To the near boards, Marksman have it. Slapped up the near side glass. Mackenzie Dwyer will twist back for Blaisdell. He'll feed across for Pappalardo. Nearly ran into his own man who was Martin as he dumps it in. This is Carson Vance with a puck, 3.35 to go in the second period. Vance is going to skate it ahead for the marksman. Gains the red line, may try to do it himself. He's got space. Carson Vance wraps around the net as he gets around of Taylor Brierley. Sends it into the far side corner, scooped up by Fornaris. Fornaris turning with it. Carlos Fornaris feeds it up to the point for Lane. Now back for Fornaris. He's got it in the high slot. Shoots, good stop by Lotz. The rebound, free in the slot. And cleared to safety. Here's a takedown on the play. Backdoor pass. They score! Brian Bowen! The marksmen are on the board late in the second period. Bowen with his eighth of the season, and it's 2-1. to one. What a play to the net front. Brian Bowen with a much-needed finish. Draws the marksman within one. Brian Bowen has scored now six of the last eight marksman goals. Now here's the catch. Taylor McCloy has gone over to speak with Mark Dungan. Birmingham is going to say that there should have been a whistle for an injured player as Fornaris' stick rode high on the follow-through of his pass. That's not a high-sticking penalty, but because the Bulls never had clear possession, that goal is going to stand. Brian Bowen with his eighth of the season, 16-48 into the second period. An assist from Matt McNair and Carlos Fornaris, who continues to rack up his total. First point in the new number 10. Jarrett Cup trying to move it around of Nick Fay as the Bulls will reset to the far side boards. Briarly tees it up. This is blocked. McCloy got in the way of that one. Taylor McCloy has had a sneaky good game up to this point. Really enjoyed seeing the captain play in what may very well be his best game of the season. He was calling for the stretch pass there. Dumped right back in by the Bulls. 2.15 to go second period. 2-1 the score. Snapped ahead over the stick of Matt McNair, charging ahead. This will be icing as Bowen possessed the puck, but it was around the back of Briarly, so the faceoff will come all the way back down to the marksman defensive zone. remaining in the second period. Face off to the blocker side of Brent Moran. Jordan Martin will face off against Matt McNair and Martin wins it up to the point. Good pressure by the marksman as it's dumped right back behind the net. Jordan Martin loses possession of Matt McNair. He's going to chip it up ice. Brian Bowen finds it. Couldn't negotiate his way around of Artur Turchiev. As Nick Minerva will give it ahead to Jordan Martin. On his backhand, he centers looking for Gillespie. A diving play made by Andrew Lane to take away the passing lane. Marksman have the puck. Fornaris flips to Brian Bowen who will center to Matt McNair. Gives to the near wing. This is Fornaris on it again. Bracing for contact, two bulls are there. McNair has the puck. McNair to Brian Bowen. He's going to walk along the goal line. And McNair, a one-timer, lots with a good stop off the blocker. No rebound. Man, this is shaping up to be a really, really good finish to this hockey game as the marksmen have found their groove. and are looking to be that little bug in your ear that just will not go away. Mackenzie Dwyer feeds it off the backside boards to Ryan Romeo. He'll give a head for Zach Mason. Mason had the puck taken away from him by the marksman. So it's speed, and around to the near side boards is Carson Vance. 
Vance took a stick through the midsection, turns the puck over. A drop pass for Dwyer. Shot blocked by FX Gerard. A rolling puck scooped up by Nick Mangold. Minute to go in the second period. One minute left in the period. Bulls, one minute. Vincenzo Renda standing behind of Brent Moran. Steps to the near side boards. His pass tipped ahead just out of the reach of FX Gerard. Pressure applied by Nick Mangold. Gerard comes back for the puck. will dump it in. New line out for the marksman. It's Fornaris, McNair, and Bowen. This has become that top group for Corey Melkert and company. Flipped up ice. McNair directing traffic vocally. will send Jarrett Cup back to retrieve the puck. Cup lost it to Nick Fay, but McNair there is support. Takes it back for the marksman far red line. On the forehand, he'll flip it right back behind the net to Jake Cass. Slung to the near side wing. Stefan Brucato has it. Chips it around to Jarrett Cup, and Nick Fay will go to chase it. Fay to step on Timofeyev in the far side corner. Gives it up to the point for Brierley. His pass across the blue line is to no one. McNair looking up ice. He's just going to shoot at the length of the rink. This is going to be icing. 1.8 seconds to go in the second period. 2-1 the score. But a critical draw upcoming here for the Bulls. Some coaches who are on the more aggressive side pull their goaltender in this situation and see if they can drive an extra body to the net front for a miracle. Craig Simchuk will not do that. Instead, it's a face-off chip toward the net front. Moran sweeps it to the far corner, and that's where the period will come to a close. 2-1 the score. The Birmingham Bulls leading the Fayetteville Marksman as we end the second period. Shots on goal in that period for the Fayetteville Marksman, 11, and a game total of 15, and for the Birmingham Bulls, 8, and a game total of 21. Folks, this is going to be a real fun finish here in Pelham. We'll be right back to recap the second period for you. We'll also turn your attention to one of our Ask the Voice questions that we'll answer up here in the booth. This is Marksman Hockey. It's just the sound of ice hitting heavy duty plastic. But for us, it's the signal calling us back to the light. And to Greg's house, because he just got a new grill. Connecting to Hot Jam's playlist. Welcome back, Bud Light Legends. It's time to take summer by the coolers. The goal of the Fayetteville Area Metropolitan Planning Organization is to develop plans that will provide the safest and most efficient transportation while protecting and enhancing the environment. On your way to your next Marksman game, remember, you can walk, carpool, or use the FAST app to track transit system buses. Marky travels green, and you should too, with FAMPO. Hey, hey you, are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. Providing patients with a relaxing environment and high quality dental care, Carolina's Dentist offers positively different dentistry in Fayetteville, Rayford, and Spring Lake. We're in network with most insurance providers, and we offer flexible finite options to keep your dental care within reach. From cavity prevention to dramatic smile makeovers, we offer a variety of dental services for every step of your dental health journey. Consider us your home for all of your dental care needs. Have you been hurt? Tired of feeling sore? Aww. Let Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine help you. Since 1973, the doctors and physical therapists at Cape Fear Ortho have remained the experts in providing exceptional, experienced orthopedic care. From surgery to physical therapy, we can help get your body back on the right track to make you feel great again. 
Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, the official orthopedic provider of the Fayetteville Marksman. Experience the thrill of being a Fayetteville Marksman season ticket holder and all the benefits that come along with it, including your same great seat for 28 or 14 home games, exclusive season ticket member events, and an opportunity to enjoy discounts on food and beverage and merchandise at the Crown Coliseum. Skate to MarksmanHockey.com backslash season tickets to learn more. Look at our yard. So many anthills everywhere. Did you know that a single ant can live to be 29 years old? Really? Well, what about a married one? Seriously? <laughs> but really, uh, we need to fix the yard. St. Peter Pest Control handles all your mosquitoes, ants, spiders, cockroaches, and even rodents. St. Peter Pest Control provides full home pest protection and consistent treatment of ants and mosquitoes in your yard, too. At St. Peter Pest Control, we send all your bugs to see St. Peter. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here. Web Carpet Company has been the finest in Fayetteville flooring since 1965. Our friendly and courteous staff will help you find the flooring of your dreams, including the best in pet-friendly carpet. Once you've selected your dream floor, our professional sales and installation teams will ensure your floor buying experience is exceptional. Visit us today on Rayford Road and at webcarpet.net. Go Earthman! We welcome you back to Pelham, Alabama. Drew Blevins alongside you in the broadcast booth. 40 minutes are in the books here from the Yellowhammer State. And this was a period for the Fayetteville Marksman that I think could serve as a catalyst for the rest of the weekend and perhaps a few more games if they're able to come from behind and get this much-needed victory. For the Bulls, it starts off rather serendipitously as they had chance after chance in the early part of the period. Brent Moran with some Herculean saves in the goal crease for the Marksman, and believe it or not, it's the simple slap shot from Mackenzie Dwyer that beats him. Dwyer's second goal of the season comes 6.32 into the second period. That made it 2-0. That's where we would stand for a long time, and I think that the game got a little stagnant there for a moment. We lost the back and forth up and down pace, but the marksmen kept finding a way to grind. They kept making plays, and though Austin Lotz had a really good second period, finally it's Brian Bowen to crack through late in the frame, 1648 into it. Bowen's eighth of the season. He's now the team leader in goals. He has scored in each of the last three games for the Fayetteville Marksmen. Man, he's, he just, he's been something special for the Fayetteville Marksman offensively and from a leadership perspective. And now it comes down to the third period once again. And, and folks, this is where Corey Melkert's process is working. How many games has it come down to this season where the third period was just 20 minutes of hockey because you had to play it? You were down three or four goals, and you were hoping against hope for something. And now the Marksmen find themselves on the doorstep of doing something that they haven't done all year, and that's come from behind in the third period to get a win. This is the exact same setup they had in Macon in late November where they were down a goal going into the third period. They gave up a power play goal late in the frame, and that was all she wrote. And now you're looking for the Marksmen to take over and create some more offensive chances. Look, defensively, they've managed the game rather well. We told you at the top of the broadcast that it always feels like three is the magic number. And if the marksman can find a way to hit that, it certainly feels like they're going to be able to take something positive out of the course of this hockey game. But a lot of fight left in the dog for the Fayetteville marksman. They're going to need a big third period. They want to come away with two points here. But the good news is it is there for the taking. The marksman have become a lot more tough and more competitive team over the course, excuse me, 
of the last couple of weeks. Folks, we'll step aside. Coming back, we will answer one of your questions up here in the broadcast booth during our Ask the Voice segment. This is Marksman Hockey. For some, it's just the sound of ice hitting heavy-duty plastic. But for us, it's the signal calling us back to the light. And to Greg's house, because he just got a new grill. Connecting to Hot Jam's playlist. Welcome back, Bud Light legends. It's time to take summer by the coolers. The goal of the Fayetteville Area Metropolitan Planning Organization is to develop plans that will provide the safest and most efficient transportation while protecting and enhancing the environment. On your way to your next Marksman game, remember, you can walk, carpool, or use the FAST app to track transit system buses. Marky travels green, and you should too, with FAMPO. Hey, hey you. Are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. Providing patients with a relaxing environment and high quality dental care, Carolina's Dentist offers positively different dentistry in Fayetteville, Rayford, and Spring Lake. We're in network with most insurance providers, and we offer flexible finance options to keep your dental care within reach. From cavity prevention to dramatic smile makeovers, we offer a variety of dental services for every step of your dental health journey. Consider us your home for all of your dental care needs. Have you been hurt? <coughs> Tired of feeling sore? Aww. Let Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine help you. Since 1973, the doctors and physical therapists at Cape Fear Ortho have remained the experts in providing exceptional, experienced orthopedic care. From surgery to physical therapy, we can help get your body back on the right track to make you feel great again. Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, the official orthopedic provider of the Fayetteville Marksman. Welcome back inside the broadcast booth of the Pelham Civic Complex. Drew Blevins alongside you. Fayetteville Marksman trail the Birmingham Bulls 2-1 to one through the second period of play. Third period puck drop in about eight minutes. But for now, we'll turn your attention to tonight's Ask the Voice segment where we endeavor to answer one of your questions about the game of hockey or the Fayetteville Marksman. Tonight's question comes from Phil, who is listening all the way out west in Asheville, North Carolina. And Phil wants to know, what has it been that has changed the complexion of the Fayetteville Marksman's outlook over the last two or three weeks? And Phil, th this is a great question. And I tell you what, if, if ever I'm incapable of doing an interview, that's a question that's going to be asked by anybody else. So, Phil, you, you can come uh, sub in and, and ask a question for me at any point because it's a real astute observation. And as we were talking about in the last segment, I think what it is for the marksmen is they have eliminated a lot of, we'll call it ego. They've eliminated a lot of really good hockey resumes and guys that expect the game to come to them and expect that they're going to be the superstars. And as a result, the marksmen have become a much closer team. They've become more competitive because they are working harder. And the fact is, right now, it's an effort game for the Fayetteville Marksmen. Look, at the beginning of the year on paper, the Fayetteville Marksmen were the best team in the SPHL. There's no question. They had more Division I prospects than anybody else. They had guys who had spent years, plural, in the ECHL or had gone over to Europe and been productive in Germany or in France. And now you've eliminated nearly all of them. You are without DJ Jerome. You are without Austin Albrecht. No more Rhett Kingston. No Liam Blackburn. No Matt Ustaski. And yes, the, you're, you're giving up the, the quote-unquote sexiness of your roster. But for Corey Melker, now he's got a group of guys that he knows how to coach. And he's comfortable coaching. And 
it would not surprise me if because he's got a team that's willing to work for him, that the marksmen are in better position. And, and this game is the perfect example. The marksmen did not get down on themselves when they went down 2 nothing. They worked harder. They earned the goal to get back in it. But Phil, that, that's been the ultimate difference is, is now this is a marksman team that is going out and working to earn their goals and earn their success instead of expecting it to come to them based on natural talent. For Corey Melkert, this, this could be a real feather in your cap win if you can find a way to come back and get it. Knowing the mountain's gonna be a little bit taller tomorrow night with Mike Davis in the lineup. This game is right there for the taking as the Bulls have not been nearly as impressive as they were back at the beginning of December. So thanks so much to Phil in Asheville for his question. If you want to have one of your questions answered on a future edition of Ask the Voice, all you have to do is email me at dblevins. That's D-B-L-E-V-I-N-S at marksmanhockey.com with your name, where you're listening from, and a good question about hockey or the marksman organization. We'll go around the league right after this. So many anthills everywhere. Did you know that a single ant can live to be 29 years old? Really? Well, what about a married one? Seriously? <laughs> but really, uh, we need to fix the yard. St. Peter Pest Control handles all your mosquitoes, ants, spiders, cockroaches, and even rodents. St. Peter Pest Control provides full home pest protection and consistent treatment of ants and mosquitoes in your yard, too. At St. Peter Pest Control, we send all your bugs to see St. Peter. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce. Because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here. Web Carpet Company has been the finest in Fayetteville flooring since 1965. Our friendly and courteous staff will help you find the flooring of your dreams, including the best in pet-friendly carpet. Once you've selected your dream floor, our professional sales and installation teams will ensure your floor buying experience is exceptional. Visit us today on Rayford Road and at webcarpet.net. Go Irishman! Welcome back to Pelham, Alabama. Let's go for a quick spin around the SPHL. We'll start things off in the state of Georgia. Roanoke has a 4-2 lead over Macon, 18-24 to go in the third period from the centerplex. Vermilion County has fallen further behind. Knoxville leads them 3-1 from Danville. Pensacola and Huntsville locked in a really good hockey game. They're tied up 2-2 entering the third period. And just about to end the second period, offense of plenty in Peoria. As the Quad City Storm have worked their way back to a 3-3 tie with the league's number one overall team, the Peoria. Rivermen. College football bowl season is upon us, and the UAB Blazers open up with a win in the Bahamas Bowl over Miami, Ohio. Second straight bowl win for the Blazers. Fun to be right here in their hometown as the green and gold get a little bit of love with their football program and a big-time win for UAB. Fayetteville Marksmen are looking for a big-time win. We'll see if they can come from behind right after this. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce. Because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here. Web Carpet Company has been the finest in Fayetteville flooring since 1965. Our friendly and courteous staff will help you find the flooring of your dreams, including the best in pet-friendly carpet. Once you've selected your dream floor, our professional sales and installation teams will ensure your floor buying experience is exceptional. 
Visit us today on Rayford Road and at webcarpet.net. Go Irishmen! Welcome back to the Pelham Civic Complex here in Pelham, Alabama. The Birmingham Bulls have a 2-1 lead over the Fayetteville Marksman. 20 minutes remain in this one. Brian Bowen, the lone marker for the Fayetteville Marksman. Matt Weisner and Mackenzie Dwyer, the goal scorers for the Birmingham Bulls. Taylor McCloy with Drake Glover and Austin Alger the starting group for the Marksmen. Andrew Lane and Jared Cup on defense. Brent Moran, 19 saves at this point in net. This place about to get real loud. Alger will take the draw. We're underway in the third period as Alger pushes up ice and brings it into attacking territory, taken away by Ryan Romeo, but Alger with help from Glover to hold the line. This one takes an awkward bounce in front, but nobody home for the marksman, and the Bulls are right back out. Brucato driving on Cup. He's around of him behind the net. Brucato hanging on to the puck. He steers it to Taylor Brierley. Setting things up for Romeo into the far side corner. This one's steered in front. Moran kicks it aside. Glover curls it to the near corner. It is intercepted and cleared back in by Timofeyev. And then shot right back out by Andrew Lane. This puck is going to check up before the goal line, so no icing as Brierley's back to retrieve it. Bulls send it to the near side wing. Flipped out to the far boards where it's carried up ice by Papalardo. He'll dump it in. Moran wanted to play it. Thinks better of it as Renda claps it around the near side boards. Held by Turchiev. Back behind the net, Papalardo. Met by Carson Vance. A centering pass comes screaming out. Brian Bowen's got it. Here comes Brian Bowen with the puck. Ahead of the red line. Puts it right behind of Carlos Fornars. This may set up a chance for the Bulls. Brought ahead by... Jordan Martin gives to Gillespie. He shoots and scores. Michael Gillespie had been held in check all game long and finally breaks free. The Bulls extend the lead to 3-1. That's a bitter pill for the Fayetteville Marksman to swallow too. Gillespie with his league-leading 32nd point and his 12th goal of the year makes it 3-1 for the Bulls. And now the Marksman may have to take a few more offensive risks. Mangone unable to clear. This one's flipped end over end. Settled by Patterson to Reamers. His toe drag produces no result. Mangone clubs it behind the net. A centering pass goes off the outside of the net. Picked up by Nick Minerva. Given to the near side wing. And Jordan Martin will bring it back ahead. In the near side corner, this puck will hop up and out of play. Face-off stays in Brent Moran's end. Face-off comes right back out to neutralize. Off the puck, out of play. It's won by the marksman as they split the defense, but that'll allow lots to play it right out to Mackenzie Dwyer. He'll give it ahead to Corey Tam. Tam to McCloy. McCloy will backhand to the far defenseman who's Kale List. Hunched over his stick, he lets it go wide of the near side post. Tam backhands it beyond of Austin Alger into the near corner. This is Taylor McCloy. McCloy backs it out for Tam, who's unable to hold the line as Dwyer pitches it out for Weisner. Weisner's around of Kale List. His backdoor pass just wide. Dwyer nearly had his second of the night. Flipped up to Zach Mason. As... This will be settled by Ryan Romeo. Dwyer to McTavish, who will shoot it down the far boards behind the net, Brent Moran. One-man pressure from Stepan Timofeyev. Nearly three minutes gone by in this third period. List up the near side boards, intercepted a centering feed, a one-timer, they score.
The top line gets the job done for Birmingham. In the midst of a change, no less. Nick Fay. His sixth of the year, 4-1 bowls. Goal comes 2.42 into the period. Nick Fay from Stepan Timofeyev. Brought ahead by Fay. He'll drop it for Briarly. Let's it go. Moran fights it off. This is a centering pass. They score again. Three goals in less than three minutes for the Birmingham Bulls. This will be Timofeyev's, and it's 5-1. Jason Pulaski is coming into the hockey game for Brent Moran. It's a frustrated Moran. Has words heading off the bench for Corey Melkert. Moran down the tunnel. And a timeout called by the marksman here. So what at one point was a game that was there for the taking has now turned in to largely mop up duty. Three goals in three minutes and a second officially for the Birmingham Bulls. Jason Pulaski will head to the marksman crease. Pulaski comes in with a four and six record. He will not be the goaltending of record unless the marksman can find four goals in this period. 9.05 save percentage. And when you look at a 360 goals against average compared to a 9.05 save percentage, understand that Jason Pulaski has been under duress for a lot of this season and has handled it about as well as anybody could. The Bulls ice the puck here, 16.45 to go third period. For Corey Melkert, the body language has changed, the bench attitude has changed. And when you get punched in the gut like that, it's no wonder. Shot toward the net on the backhand. Good stop by Lotz. He'll find the puck and cover it. Credit to Austin Lotz in this game, too. Had a rocky start in the first period. Is really shaped it up for Birmingham. But I think the bigger story for the Fayetteville Marksmen is now they are teed up to go 1-9-2 and two in games where they do not have the lead going into the third period. And on one side of the coin, right, that's great for the Marksmen. If you can shorten the game, make it a 20-minute game, lock it down in the third, that's awesome. That's a skill not a lot of teams have. The Marksmen have found that. But on the other side, sometimes you got to find a way to steal a couple of hockey games, and the marksmen have not been able to do that. Up the far boards, pass intercepted at center. List sends it ahead of Austin Alger. Doug Blaisdale will head back to retrieve it. Blaisdale gives to the far corner. It's intercepted. Here come the marksmen. Driven in. Lots turns it aside. Wrap chance. For Drake Glover off the outside of the cage. Now McCloy steers it toward the net front wide of Austin Alger. Jarrett Cup pinching in. We'll back it up to the point. A shot blocked, and the Bulls clear out to the red line. Andrew Lane off the near boards. This is Alger. He'll rake it in back behind the net. Blaisdale gets it and feeds it up the far boards. Brian Bowen has the puck. Bowen to Andrew Lane. Lane will skate it ahead of the red line. 
Feeds the far wing. That's Matt McNair. He's got Lane driving the net. The pass is kicked away by the goaltender, Austin Lotz. To the point, Lane's going to let it go. Caught by Lotz with 15 minutes to go in the third period. 5-1 Bulls. Timeout on the ice, 15 minutes to go, third period. Birmingham finds the offense, 5-1, Bulls. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here. Five one Birmingham in the driver's seat of this one. Three goals on three shots in three minutes and a second. The story of this one, all coming in the third period. And if you had gone up to get your popcorn and maybe were late in the kitchen line, you missed it. It's a draw that is won by the marksman, a quick drive by a Fornaris, punched out by Austin Lotz. Turning with it, Bowen. Gives to Fornaris, lost his balance, regains control, feeds it back behind the net. Bowen on the puck, looking to dig it free with Matt McNair helping him out. Bulls come away with the puck, but turn it over. Moved ahead by Matt McNair, he'll leave it. McNair finds it again, drops it to the point, and gives to Vincenzo Renda, who charges into the near side corner. Renda. Working back behind the net, he's knocked down as Nick Fee will take it. All the way ahead for Timofeyev. Carson Vance back checking, finds the puck first as Vance will look up ice. Vance gonna skate it himself. Gets to the red line, dumps it around of Nick Minerva. Back behind the net, Jake Cass will go to fight for it. But Zach Reimers is right there in front of him. Rolling puck up the near side boards. Patterson unable to hold it and the Bulls are right back out to the near wing. This is Michael Gillespie. Backhands off of a marksman glove, so we're all good. As marksman will find the puck. This is Jarrett Cup. Snaps it ahead, looking for Reamers. He's got him down the near wing. Reamers with speed, cuts in, lost the puck. Good play made, getting back on his horse by Nick Minerva. Now Papalardo puts it through traffic. This is slapped toward the net by Mangone. Kicked aside by Lotz. Cup. Hanging on to the puck, he's tripped up as Gillespie has it. Gillespie taken down, he'll skate right through it. We have not had a penalty called in this hockey game. Back behind the net is Jordan Martin. Twists around of his man. Martin on the backhand, loses the puck to Mangone. Jordan Martin had it for a moment, now Mangone gets it again. Mangone and Martin both go crashing to the ice. Marksman have the puck to the near wing. This will be Andrew Lane. To the near boards, Lane, his pass to flex off of Reamer's stick. Reamer's dejected, will get off. Corey Tam hanging on to the puck here. Four hands off the far boards. Intercepted by Dwyer. Now Weisner dumps it into the far side corner. Corey Tam at a foot race for it. Beats out Zach Mason. Mason trying to tie up Alger for the puck. Alger finds Glover up the far wing. Pitched ahead. McCloy looks over his shoulder. Puck bounces to the marksman attacking blue line near boards. Thwarted there, and a reset to McCloy. Pitches this one sky high, and that one is well out of play with 12.24 to go in the third period. These two teams will do it all over again tomorrow evening, 8 p.m. Eastern puck drop, 7.45 Eastern pregame coverage. The Marksman Radio Network and Hockey TV. Final meeting between these two teams is the Birmingham Bulls are going to become, get this, just the second team in the Corey Melkert era to have outright won a season series on the Marksman. Knoxville did it last season. The Birmingham Bulls 
They can hold on to this four-goal lead with 12 minutes to go in the third period. They're going to be the next team to do it. Melkert still has a 500 or better record against every active head coach in the SPHL. Hard to believe, yes, but it is very true. He is 500 against four of those coaches and has officially not seen two of them, those being Jean-Guy Trudel and the new gentleman who's taken over with the Vermilion County Bobcats. Near side boards is... You may get a chance to see Toro the Bull in our shot right there. We apologize if he's blocking the view as I can't see anything on the near side boards. Finally, it's behind the net. Tam drops Nick Fay Behind the net, Fay finds the puck again, working against Corey Tam. Taken by Matt McNair for the marksman, who will backhand it up ice for Norris. Pitches to Brian Bowen. He's going to twist back with a puck. Bowen. Feeds it ahead to Carson Vance off of his backhand, right in on goal. Caught by Lotz, no second chance. Marksman just looking for something positive to take away out of this one as you get a second look at the catch by Lotz. Sent up the near side wing, Carson Vance loses the puck, now a two on one, Papalardo driving, he shoots, good stop by Pulaski who's come in cold. The reset by the Bulls, they'll dump it in. Arm up for icing, but that'll be negated as Pulaski shoots it around to the far side corner. Mangone comes in to knock it free. The puck does bounce over Jake Cass and back to center. Now Blaisdale. Gives to Papalardo as he swats at the puck. He'll be taken to the far side corner by Carson Vance. He'll flip it up in the air. A rolling puck looked at by McCloy, and instead it'll be taken back as Jordan Martin looks at it. McCloy knocks it free, but the Bulls will take it at the center ice circle. Dumped right back in behind the net. This is Andrew Lane. Curling around to the near boards. It goes over the stick of McTavish as Briarly feeds the far wing. Here's a howitzer punched away by Pulaski as Taylor McCloy finds the puck. McCloy dumps it into the near corner. Drake Glover, the first one there, will get some help from McCloy. They battle. Glover pulls away with the puck. Drake Glover back behind the net. Fighting off his defender with one arm. Glover going against Briarly as those two run into each other. Glover turns and shoots. It's off of Briarly. Rebound taken by Alger. He was unable to curl the puck around his man. To the near boards. Wisner is going to drop it for Zach Mason. Mason will shoot it in on Pulaski, who steers it behind the net. Vincenzo Renda looking up ice with it. Renda will bring it ahead. Now Renda driving for himself. To the near corner. He'll backhand to the slot. Picked up by Fort Norris. Jarrett Cup will get over to hold the line. Behind the net, it's over the stick of Matt McNair. To the near wing, turning with it, Fornaris. Walking in, Carlos Fornaris drops for Matt McNair. Nobody home for the pass. As the Bulls will clear safely back out to center, and Zach Mason dumps it all the way down. This will be icing. And the faceoff comes right back down to Austin Lotz's end when we come back. 8.39 to go third period, 5-1 Bulls. Webb Carpet Company has been the finest in Fayetteville flooring since 1965. Our friendly and courteous staff will help you find the flooring of your dreams, including the best in pet-friendly carpet. Once you've selected your dream floor, our professional sales and installation teams will ensure your floor buying experience is exceptional. Visit us today on Rayford Road and at webcarpet.net. Go Irishman! Largely mop-up duty remaining in this contest as the Birmingham Bulls have a 5-1 lead on the Fayetteville Marksman. The Bulls have not reached 30 shots as this is going to be one of their lower offensive output performances. 
Crowd has been entertained in this one, and it's going to be a real good atmosphere tomorrow night. The Bulls poised to take what will be their 11th win of the season because the marksman set to fall to 8-9-2. There's a hard hit on Lane as the puck jostles free right back out to center. Far boards, Lane pokes it away from the attacking Ryan Romeo and a chance for Bowen down the near wing. He's going to let it go. Big rebound off the blocker of Lotz. Lane squares to fire in and out of the glove of Lotz, but he keeps it out. Lane now shoots well wide of the far side post. We've got a tangle up in front as Stepan Timofeyev going at it with Matt McNair. Timofeyev working over McNair, throws a cheap shot at him, and now we're going to get a whistle as Bowen is also in. Timofeyev and McNair. Linesmen are already in. Stepan Timofeyev is not letting up. Timofeyev's got to be careful here. This could be continuing an altercation as he kept trying to throw punches after Jesse Burns was in there. He'll be the only one to go off for a penalty. Did you have a look at the replay, and that was assault in the front of the net. It's officially a roughing call against Timofeyev. Just two minutes. It'll come 12.08 into this third period. The Marksman will go to the St. Peter Pest Control power play for the first time in this hockey game. Power play for the Marksman has been really good, operating at better than 23%. Meanwhile, Birmingham's penalty kill has been a weak point operating at just 75%, and you would say, well, gee, that is, that's not very good, Drew, and you're right, but penalty kills across the league have been down. I mean, there, there's nobody from a PK perspective operating at anywhere close to 87%. This is Bowen stick handling. Gives to the far side hash marks. Intercepted by Jordan Martin. He's going to pitch it ahead, and now a foot race for it. Good speed by Gillespie. He's in against Andrew Lane. Gillespie has the puck pinned against the Zamboni doors near side corner and Jason Pulaski's end. Pulled free. Austin Alger will have the puck. He's going to drop it back as the marksman just looking to get the puck into attacking ice. An intercepted pass and a shorthanded chance. Dropped behind. Here's Papalardo. Let's it go. The marksman block up the shooting lane. Lane picks up the puck with seven minutes to go in this third period. He will give to the far wing, Brian Bowen. Turns back for Lane, and now Bowen's going to call for it. He's got it. Bowen with McNair crossing the blue line, intercepted by Brucato. Cleared off the far side boards all the way out. Minute gone by in the St. Peter Pest Control power play for the marksman. This will be flipped right back behind the net. As Carson Vance will take the puck for Fayetteville. Vance. Up the far boards. He's going to drop it back. McNair to Reamers, who will enter on the near wing. Reamers slides by Zach Mason, but a good play by Artur Turchiev. He's got the puck in the near corner. Mason now turning with it. Line held by McNair. Sets up Carson Vance near blue line. To the near circle, that's Reamers. Passes right back behind the net as Vance calls for it. Sets up McNair at the far circle. He shoots over the crossbar. Line held by Reamers near side blue line. Reamers into the near corner. This is Jack Patterson. He's going to feed it up to the point for Vance. A howitzer. That goes off a skate on the way through. The rebound in front. McCloy shoots. Stopped by Lutz. He'll melt it. Ten seconds remaining in the Timofeyev minor. That's the best scoring chance the Marksmen have had in the third period. It comes with 6.01 remaining in the frame. Nick Mangold trying to curl the face off back. He cannot. This one is zipped the length of the rink as the penalty expires. 
So the marksman 0 for 1 on the St. Peter Pest Control power play, largely perfunctory with this little time left. 5.45 to go, third period. Chipped into the near side corner. Mackenzie Dwyer awaiting it there. Now Gillespie coming in to knock it free to Jake Cass. Gillespie gets the puck from Cass and will skate it ahead himself. Now to Jordan Martin. He winds and sends a change up as a dump in. Renda touches right back to Martin. His centering pass knocked away by Mangon. Kale List gives up ice. This is FX Girard driving with it. A round of one man. Girard hangs on to the puck as he's knocked to his knees. Picked up by Kale List. List spinning back behind the net. Kale List, the defenseman, holding off Jake Cass. List awaiting reinforcements. Stick handling against McKenzie Dwyer. His pass behind the net to no one, intercepted by Brucato. Stefan Brucato gives it to the near side wing. Timofeya with a one arm shiver as he knocks over Mangon, who will get a look at the number 10. We'll keep an eye as Timofeya has played as a man possessed here in this third period. The breakout pass by Arenda, intercepted by Blaisdale. Doug Blaisdale fires as this one's knocked down by Nick Fay. Held by Blaisdale as he turns to Brucato now. Brucato behind the net for Fay. Gives it up for Blaisdale. Doug Blaisdale with a wrist shot off the skate of Matt McNair. A headman pass. Bowen has a step on Blaisdale. Here he goes. He shoots and spins it wide to the far side post. Good back checking by Blaisdale there. Now a set up in front, Austin Lotz! A miraculous save on Andrew Lane, sliding across, he catches and holds. When it's not your night, it's not your night. It's not been the night for the marksman. 4.14 to go, third period. We'll finish after this. The goal of the Fayetteville Area Metropolitan Planning Organization is to develop plans that will provide the safest and most efficient transportation while protecting and enhancing the environment. On your way to your next Marksman game, remember, you can walk, carpool, or use the FAST app to track transit system buses. Marky travels green, and you should too, with FAMPO. Four fourteen remains in this hockey game. 5-1, the Birmingham Bulls leading the Fayetteville Marksman. The Bulls had a 5-2 win back here on November 10th, the last time these two teams got together. That win came in a much more convincing fashion. This one is going to feel like the Marksman gave it away early in the third period, giving up three goals on three shots in three minutes and a second. Mason... Loses his footing. This puck will reach the goal line, but no icing. Taylor McCloy holding on to the puck. So he'll give it to Corey Tam, who will dump it in around to Mason. And now you've just got to be careful that nobody does anything that would fall under the stupid category on either side. Austin Alger battling against Nick Fay, who's had a really good game to this point, forcing him into a turnover. Drake Glover now turns and fires. Lots steers it aside with the blocker. It's Taylor Briarly has the puck. He'll flip this one up through neutral ice. Andrew Lane settles it. Lane curling up ice with the puck. He's around of one man. Lost the puck, and here comes Timofeyev. Back against Corey Tam. Tam stands him up on a good back-checking play. Tam loses his helmet. He's got to get off here. We've got an arm up. And it is a roughing call. The question is, who's the guilty party? It appears as it's Stepan Timofeyev, and it is. That extra shove at the end of the sequence, and Timofeyev will have his second seat in the box tonight. He's taken both penalties in the game. So another chance on the St. Peter Pest Control power play for the marksman, McNair. Feeds behind the net to McCloy. Snaps it up for Carson Vance. Vance back for McCloy, who will slide it behind the net. This is McNair. Patterson lined up in the slot as McCloy takes the puck. He's behind the net. Sets up McNair for a one-timer that's blocked. It stings McKenzie Dwyer. Here's a centering pass as Patterson squares up looking for one. To the point now. McNair 
Settles the puck in backhands to Carson Vance for a low wrist shot that is blocked, but right to Zach Reemers. Reemers hanging on to the puck, given up to the point. This is Vance, slides across for McNair, far circle. His wrist shot punched away by Austin Lotz. The puck in the near side corner. Jake Cass trying to get it to Gillespie. He cannot. 2.30 to go in the game. A centering feed to Reemers, his one-timer. Shut down by Austin Lotz. Well, Austin Lotz is going to cobble himself together. What is a very nice start. I do think you're going to see Hayden Stewart tomorrow, but Lotz is going to make a case that he needs to go again. Face-off steered back to Andrew Lane. Lane squares it up to Fornars. Back for Lane, a rising wrist shot tipped by Glover wide. Bowen now has the puck. Brian Bowen from the far side hash marks into the far corner. Stick handles and finds Lane at the point. This pass hops over his stick. And the marksman will reset with a minute gone by in the St. Peter Pest Control power play. This pass to Austin Alger is off of his stick, and the marksmen are going to have to go all the way back, turning to go 200 feet. Carlos Fornaris with the puck. Slides to the near wing for Bowen. He's a round of one man. Brian Bowen. Drops for Fornaris, who curls to the point. This one's wide of Andrew Lane. And the marksman once again will have to reset and neutralize. Holding on to the puck here is Austin Alger. He'll turn to the far side boards where it's dumped in and cleared right back out as Fornaris is unable to get anything going. 90 seconds left in the hockey game. Timofeyev standing in the penalty box. And just as he does, this puck is into the Birmingham bench out of play. It's going to be a moot point. But it does make you wonder if the marksmen had not given up what they gave up in those three minutes, the, how different the complexion of this game is. To draw one to Vincenzo Renda. Timofeyev out of the box. Here's a low wrister caught by Austin Lotz. Face-off will go right back to the far side circle. 5-1 Birmingham. So the draw is one to Jarrett Cup. Cup hangs on to the puck. Lost his footing. As the marksmen go to work in the far side corner. Kale List trying to kick the puck free along with Nick Mangone. Mangone and Timofeya battling against each other. Mangone with a hard hit awkwardly on Kale List as he hit his legs. List trying to catch up as Timofeyev goes driving. Bulls have one more chance. This is Briarly. Low wrist shot. Pulaski says no. Renda. We'll give across to Jarrett Cup now. He's pressured by Fabe. It heads out to Reemers, who's got it. Reemers along the blue line. His pass blocked, picked up by Nick Minerva. 30 seconds to go in the game. To the near wing, Wisner trying to dump it in. Patterson lost his footing. McCloy has the puck for the marksman. He'll give to Renda. Renda's going to turn back behind the net for Jarrett Cup. Get it right back as Renda will feed the far side wing. Nine seconds to go. Here comes McCloy. He'll flip it end over end. It will bounce to Lotz, who will cover one more time. Fayetteville Marksman will have their two-game winning streak snapped as they will fall to 8-9-2 on the season. Meanwhile, the Birmingham Bulls will improve to 11-5-1. And, and they'll be a team that's going to start to put some pressure on the upper echelon of the league. One more face off, all a formality. One by Birmingham, two, one. That's where the horn will sound. The Birmingham Bulls finish off the Fayetteville Marksman 5-1 here at the Pelham Civic Complex in Pelham, Alabama. We'll have final stats for you coming up right after these messages. As it stands, Birmingham five, the Marksman one. We'll wrap up this game right after this.
Experience the thrill of being a Fayetteville Marksman season ticket holder and all the benefits that come along with it, including your same great seat for 28 or 14 home games, exclusive season ticket member events, and an opportunity to enjoy discounts on food and beverage and merchandise at the Crown Coliseum. Skate to MarksmanHockey.com backslash season tickets to learn more. Look at our yard. So many anthills everywhere. Did you know that a single ant can live to be 29 years old? Really? Well, what about a married one? Seriously? <laughs> but really, uh, we need to fix the yard. St. Peter Pest Control handles all your mosquitoes, ants, spiders, cockroaches, and even rodents. St. Peter Pest Control provides full home pest protection and consistent treatment of ants and mosquitoes in your yard, too. At St. Peter Pest Control, we send all your bugs to see St. Peter. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here. Web Carpet Company has been the finest in Fayetteville flooring since 1965. Our friendly and courteous staff will help you find the flooring of your dreams, including the best in pet-friendly carpet. Once you've selected your dream floor, our professional sales and installation teams will ensure your floor buying experience is exceptional. Visit us today on Rayford Road and at webcarpet.net. Go Archman! Well, for the Fayetteville Marksman, this was not their night, and I, I think there was some positive to take out of this game at one point, and, and you've got to go back, and, and you've got to find a way to dig a little bit of silver lining out of it. You held the Birmingham Bulls at bay offensively. You did not allow them to get out and run. You created some offensive chances of yourself, but as Corey Melkert said, and, and this, this is a point that is going to ring true, I think, for a lot of people tonight, and I'm one of them. This marksman group is just not good enough to have moments of the game where you completely forget your positioning for, and forget how to play. And for three minutes and one second, they give up three shots, all three go in. And that's not on Brent Moran. That is a, a team shortcoming. And I think it's one of those things now for the marksman that you understand what you're doing tomorrow night going right back into the lion's mouth and the road has not been kind to the marksman but you've got to find a way to get the job done let's go ahead and recap tonight's game thought the marksman had a decent first period just on the scoreboard they were unable to hold the bulls off the board matt weisner scores his second of the season 17 16 into the first period the marks will get up give up another one before we hit the halfway point of the hockey game mckenzie dwyer second of the year from nick Faya. And Stepan Timofeyev. Timofeyev would end the game with four points, and so would Faya. And, man, I tell you, those two looked really good. The Bulls get some more offensive firepower back tomorrow night when Mike Davis returns into the lineup. Brian Bowen would score the lone goal for the Fayetteville Marksman, 16-48 into the second period. That made it 2-1. You head into the third period. You think you're right there. You're in it. You've got an opportunity. And that's when things go sideways. Michael Gillespie scores a minute and 11 seconds into the period. And then it's Nick Faya scores his sixth of the season. And then Stefan Timofeyev with his sixth of the season. Three goals on three shots and 301. That's all she wrote. On the power play, the Marksmen go 0 for 2 on the St. Peter Pest Control power play tonight. They did not take a penalty in this hockey game, so the penalty kill will end up staying at 70%, which right now is 11th in the league. For the marksman, believe it or not, they outshoot the Bulls on that last second rush, 34-33. But a great goaltending performance tonight by Austin Lotz, and the marksman will have a lot of questions to answer in that locker room before playing again tomorrow night. We'll have pregame coverage starting at 7.45 p.m. Eastern and 8 p.m. Eastern puck drop right here from the Pelham Civic Complex. 
as the Marksmen will wrap up their season series against the Birmingham Bulls. We hope you will join us for that one. Until next time, we hope you enjoyed this one as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. I'm Drew Blevins. The final score, the Birmingham Bulls 5, the Fayetteville Marksman 1. Hope you'll join us again tomorrow. Until then, good night.